Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Check, 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 microphone, check. That's, that's probably good right there. Welcome to Code Wars Code Katas episode 56. This is the 56th episode we've done of this. Um, yes, we've been doing this a while. Hey! Dejusige! <laughs> Thank you for the 100 bits. Who says, what's up, CJ? Not much. Um, I took a long nap. And I'm ready to code again. <laughs> well, I mean, I worked and then I took a nap. Um, welcome everyone to the show. I do not have a new mic. No, 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 no. Um, does it sound different? I'm not using RTX voice. Basically. Basically. Um, I don't think. Let's see. Yeah, hey, yeah, it's uh, just, yeah. I, I am using a, um, a TC Helicon uh, voice pedal. Hey, Brooks, what's up, Brooks? Shout out to Brooks. <clears throat> he is a mod here on the channel, and he also is a streamer and a YouTuber. Check him out. Oh, you're working on P5? That's pretty cool. Um, a thing in front of it? <laughs> like a fifth. Oh, it's actually like look in look in the vods. It's been a while since I used a pop filter. What's up, Alka? Uh, cool. So if you are new to uh, Code Wars, this is a website where uh, there are user submitted coding problems of varying difficulty. Uh, you can solve them with many different programming languages. So I'm going to use JavaScript tonight. I mean, I use JavaScript all the time. <laughs> Um, and uh, they range in difficulty from 8Q, which is the easiest, all the way up to 1Q, which is the hardest. Uh, last time we got started on a 1Q, we're about 60% done with it, and tonight we're going to complete it. Revive Newt? Tier 3 sub? What? Time's just fine. <laughs> let, me, let me read your message. <laughs> Three months already, time is just flying. Thank you for being so fun, inspiring, relatable, and interesting. You may not formally teach, but I'm learning a lot from you. Well, thank you very much, Revive Newt. I think that's the hope of the coding garden, is like, you learn without even realizing you're learning. <laughs> I make learning fun. Uh, and thank you very much, Alex, for that Twitch Prime sub. But thank you, Revive Newt, for being here with us. Um, you have gifted many, many subs, and we, we very much appreciate it here at the coding garden. And I say we, because I mean we. Right? Right, everyone? We. <laughs> um, cool, yeah. So we're in a 2Q tonight, which is, um, uh, it's difficult. <laughs> like, these, these typically take me several hours to complete. And so we got started on it last time. Um, this is the kata that we're working on. So if you want to take a look at it, you can read the directions and stuff like that there. Before we get into it, I'm going to say hello to everybody like I normally do. Um, <laughs> And um, then we'll then we'll we'll, we'll uh, finish it. And I'm I'm uh, I'm feeling pretty confident about this one because um, we've completed like the majority of the methods. We've gotten it working. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm pretty confident about this. Also, have you heard of Twitch Prime? Um, you probably have, but if you haven't, you can, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to Twitch. You get a free Twitch Prime sub for any of your favorite streamers. It can be anyone, not just me. Uh, if you click that link, you can see if you have that. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, let's all do some drops real quick. So uh, if you're new here, you can play the drop game. If you type drop me, this will drop your avatar. There's me. And if it lands in the coding garden, you'll get your name on my screen um, for, for a few seconds. This is not the new Canvas version. Here's the thing. I'm feeling so confident that we're going to finish this kata today that when we're done with this kata, I think we'll work on the drop game because that'll be fun. Um, it was a tiny little Alka. Teeny tiny. Teeny tiny drop. Not having much luck today. Okay, here comes Revive Newt. Do -do -do -do. That's going to be an, a decent one. Uh, not, not really. It's on the edge. <laughs> I'm Tom Eddie. Good job. Good job, Revive Newt. Um, that's it. Teeny tiny. Teeny tiny. So the closer you are to the center, the bigger your, uh, your seedling will be. And there is a 90 second cooldown, so you can only drop once every 90 seconds. This is my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch. Uh, what did you miss this morning? Oh, we did web scraping, Andrew. Um, to a record record of audience, I think that was the most people um, I've ever had organically. It might have been the same, about the same as Monday, but we did get rated with over 100 people and that push, pushed us over like 600 people watching. There were a lot of people. There's not gonna be that many people here tonight because there usually isn't. <laughs> Um, but we did web scraping. It was super fun. Um, the very last thing was we we tried to reverse some weird data format. Somebody mentioned it was like length padded JSON stream or something like that. I did not do a good job. <laughs> 
<laughs> when was the moment when CJ stopped greeting viewers? I made a huge pause watching him. Free debugs. I haven't stopped greeting viewers yet. We, <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. No, no, no. We, we, we change things up a little bit. So first of all, we tell everyone how the drop game works because everyone's always like, how's the drop game works? So we tell them that. We then also tell them how the overlay works. And then after we tell them how the overlay works, we acknowledge any follows that happened. And then if there was a hype train <laughs> like there is now, thank you very much, uh, Bato, uh, Bato Himura. Thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Then after we acknowledge the follows, we'll acknowledge any of the supporters during the hype train, and then we say hello to everyone. That's that's basically, that's like the unofficial agenda I have in my head. I don't know, but this is my uh, custom chat overlay. Turtle Monkey, thank you for the 100 bits. Um, yeah, we, we got the checkbox now. <laughs> First hour agenda. Um, so you can see in my overlay that uh, some people have a, a flag. Oh, actually, yeah, free debugs. You didn't have that, did you? It's good to see you, free debugs. I was so I was uh, I was creating my um, my frequently asked questions here, and as a part of that, I actually went back to some of my older streams um, because I was so okay. First of all, this is also new. We have the frequently asked questions. Look at all these frequently asked questions. Though somebody asked a question this morning that is not in here, and I think it should be. Um, but if you have a question and you're new here. It's probably answered here. Um, so there's that. But there's this section that says, uh, how did you make these overlays in chat window? And then, watch this everyone. Hey, Desha Sej, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime. Oh no, no, for the upgraded sub. Nice, very much appreciated. I appreciate, I appreciate you. <laughs> what was the question? There was no question. I'm just happy to see free, be free debugs. And what I was going to say is I created this. So this is a whole write-up of how all of the things on my screen work. But what I also did is I linked to the source code and I linked to all of the videos where I was working on the things on my screen. So th these are these are the... Hey, Dab Scratch. Thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Uh, but these are the original live streams where I created the initial drop game. Um, this is a live stream when I was working on the overlay alert that you see over here. Um, the live stream when I made the shout out bot, the live stream when I made the 8-bit LED, the all of the initial live streams for the old chat manager. Hey Tom, thank you for the 200 bits. <laughs> and then the new chat manager in that video, but I was only reminded because in these videos, I had to go find these videos, but free debugs, you were in there a lot. <laughs> we haven't seen you in a while. Thanks for being here. And thank you Dab Scratch, thanks for being here. So detailed, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, I mean, it's kind of because it's it's kind of because I I feel kind of bad <laughs> that the code is all over the place. <laughs> like, uh, if you're a technical person, you can you could probably get all of this code working. You definitely could. Um, but it, this is and, and by no means ready for non technical people to use on their stream. But yeah, what's up, Lechi? You're a good reason to get out of bed. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Um, okay, what were we doing? Oh, yeah, we're gonna explain my overlay. So this might be new to you, uh, free, free debugs as well. So you can see some people in my overlay have a country flag, and they also have uh, an, an icon next to their name. So like Amazon has the UK flag. 3.33 a.m. South Clark. Oh, so much Clark. <laughs> it looks like South Clark, like South Park. Uh, thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Um, but, and then, yeah, you see the Ubuntu logo. So if you would like to do this, um, badges. Yeah, I saw your issue, uh, Cheyenne. I'll answer that. Uh, I don't think it's a frequently asked question, but it is a good question. Their question was, why do I have so mo- Hey! <laughs> Pacifics! Thank you for that gifted sub to Free Debugs. Congrats, Free Debugs! Um, but yeah, uh, Cheyenne's question was, why do I have so much free RAM? And the answer is, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Eudaimonia, for the 500 bits. Um, Okay, how do we do this? Uh, these are what are known as badges, and I guess there's a timeout on that command. But if you go to this page, uh, it's the Font Awesome Cheat Sheet. It has a list of all the possible things that you can use. Mastermind! Thank you for the raid! Welcome, raiders. Welcome to the show. Um, you're just in time. We're just getting started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the follows. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll start from the beginning. So all, uh, all, all the raiders, um, I can I can tell you how all this stuff on my screen works. We're here to kata. Nice. We're actually like knee deep in a 2Q kata that we started last week, but it'll be fine. I'll explain it once we get into it. Um, usually the first like 30 or 40 minutes of the stream is just me saying hello to everyone. So welcome. You're right on time. First of all, I would like you all to join me in playing the drop game. So if you type exclamation mark drop me, that will drop your avatar. See, there I am. And if it lands in the coding garden, this might be good. That's a good look at that. Professional dropper. 
coding garden. <laughs> so the closer your drop lands to the middle of the screen, the bigger your name will be. Okay, who's this? Cheyenne, good drop. We got we got a couple more. Uh, Thon, good drop. Ooh, that was a good one. Alex, good drop. Skywalkie. <laughs> There's a 90 second cooldown, so you can only drop once every 90 seconds. Uh, but it's a fun little game. Oh, I see Mastermind. <laughs> it's gonna be in the corner. <laughs> This is not the new drop game. I mentioned, oh, great jobs, everyone. But I mentioned that um, I'm feeling good about this code kata, so we might actually finish a little bit early, and then we'll spend time working on the new drop game. Because this old drop game is just DOM manipulation. These are literally elements on the page, and we're adjusting the top left of the CSS, and we're rewriting it in Canvas, so that way it can handle thousands of drops. Um, I mean, not, I mean, that's not that uh, thousands of people watch me. <laughs> I've, been, I've been raided by thousands of people before. We're, we're going to uh, increase the performance. Uh, cool. So that's the drop game. And what we're explaining now is how my overlay works. So you can see in the overlay, some people have their country flag set. Hey, Blazer Prime. Thank you for that Twitch Prime resub. Uh, two months, two month resub. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, you have country flags and, and icons in the chat overlay. So um, what we're explaining is if you go to this website, um, and this is the command exclamation mark badges, but there's a timeout on it. But if you go to this font awesome cheat sheet, any of the brands that are listed here, or logos or whatever they are, um, you can put you can put next to your name in the overlay. Um, so yours is the Linux penguin. That's Tux. Yeah, what's up, Bosifius? <laughs> so what am I? I got to choose one. I'm gonna choose one today. Um, actually, do we have a? Uh, no, I'm gonna go with this one, Envira. So it's it's a nice little leaf. It's very fitting. Um, so what you do, hey, and thank you all for the supports. Nine subs, 900 bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, and uh, Andrews is Java. <laughs> so if you type exclamation mark team, uh, followed by any any one of the words from that web page, um, it's gonna show up um, next to your name. Um, so you can see, there it is. There we go, so Cleberson, JavaScript, great work. I'm on the Leaf team, <laughs> and Sky Skywalkie is on the, I guess, the Google team. Um, okay, so there's that, and then you can also set your country. So if you do exclamation mark country or exclamation mark flag, they both work, followed by a two-character country code. So mine is US. Find your two-character country code, um, and then it will set it. So I am from the US, uh, Brayson is from Peru, and Dimitri is from uh, the Russian Federation, and... Uh, let's see, Skywalkie is in Romania, um, and Strategy First is in France, Where, what else? Uh, Lechi is in Australia, uh, Sequel Gorgster is in Canada, uh, what else we got? Yeah, 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 so there's a lot, let's see, let's see what else, um, Australia, Romania, um, oh, we got Israel, welcome to space from Israel, <laughs> so you can set your country, um, Oh, the JS isn't there. You might have to try again. But Bruno from Argentina. <laughs> um, so there's that. And uh, <laughs> the United Kingdom of Great Britain in Northern Ireland. <laughs> Welcome, I'm Tom Eddy. <laughs> and what's up, JD from Columbia? Very cool. Uh, the other thing is the LEDs. I'm going to get the LEDs going. Um, I can do it. Oh, they're not plugged in. BRB. <laughs> oh, okay. It looks like I'm holding nothing. This is a cup. I'm, ho I'm holding. I'm holding a cup right now. <laughs> Needs them LEDs. We'll get there. Give me a second. Hey, thank you, Vape Juice. <laughs> thank you for that stretch. Um, okay. Well, I, we might have to adjust that a little bit. But yeah, everybody take a second. Let's all stretch. Whew. So uh, your message is darker. Actually, I should put that in the frequently asked questions. Um, but you're, yeah, thank you for, for shouting out uh, Vape Juice. Um, 
if you are not following the channel, your message is a darker color, or you followed less than 30 minutes ago. So if you've already followed, then in about 30 minutes, your, your message will be the same color as everyone else. But it helps me uh, see the new people. It also, also helps me spot potential trolls or people that have never been here before. Um, so yeah, okay, LED's running. We need a webcam now. Flagjack, oh, Nepal, <laughs> welcome, uh, Pashaks. <laughs> Uh, oh, look at that. Okay, we can fix this. 59 pending redemptions. <laughs> we, I need to hook, do they have an API yet? Because we need to tap into the API. Add a level next to the name base. I want to. And here's the thing, like I have, I pretty much have a way to do that because I, I do have, well, I, I need to keep that open, sorry. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll talk about the LEDs. I just got to get them going. Uh, but basically, you can set them in the chat. Okay, so that's good. Now I need to start my camera preview. Uh, we're going to work on, <laughs> we'll potentially work on the drop game after we're done with this kata. And yes, we can drop millions of, well, the, the plan is to make it performant enough to, to handle millions of drops. Um, we got raided by Kit Boga once, and there were, uh, it was like 6,000 people, and they all tried to drop at the same time, and my screen just came to a halt. Um, and so if that ever happens again, I'm not saying it will, but if it does, um, we will be ready. <laughs> yep, yep, so uh, this is an Electron app. And it's written with view. Um, okay. Yes, so we need to do that. I need to adjust the, uh, the, the focus a little bit. Cool, but uh, those of you in the chat, you know what to do. Well, those of you that have been here before, you know, you know what to do on how to change this. Um, just wait a moment. <laughs> wait, did somebody say just wait a moment? Yeah, just wait a moment. <laughs> Uh, we're doing manual. Oh no no no! Yeah, ma manual focus. Well, that's 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 better, sort of. <laughs> Revive Newt! Ah! <laughs> Thank you for the gifted subs. <laughs> Very much appreciated. Um, is the LED? I guess the LED's not working. One two three four five six seven eight. Hmm. Hmm. But thank you so much, Revive Newt. Revive Newt. So much support. So much support. It's okay. It's okay, Quantum. It'll happen one day. <laughs> can we get some? Can we get some? Uh, some hearts in the chat. Um, the LEDs are the exact opposite of not working. You know what, Doc? You're absolutely right because they're all lit up. <laughs> it's very possible that something got unplugged. Uh, I need to, I need to, I need to get it going. Um, what are we doing? Yeah, 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 hearts. Hearts in the chat for, um, for Revive Newt. We appreciate you. Yeah, sponsored by Newt. Exactly. <laughs> and if I get the LEDs working, we'll put the, we'll put the Newt on my screen too. Um, okay, so that's running. Oh, no connected device found. That's the problem. Hey, Anonymous Gifter. <laughs> Well, there you go, Quantum. You know, anonymous, you should don't give it to people that ask. But congrats, congrats to Quantum for the gift. <laughs> All right. So for some reason, it's not being detected. Let's try again. This is gonna work now. Ah, okay, should work now. Hey, and just hundred bits. Who says for the LEDs? All right. So try it now. You can type exclamation mark LED followed by eight zeros or ones. There you go. And so in your LED command. Um, the zeros correspond to a bit that's off, and the ones correspond to a bit that is on. Andrew, you're already subbed. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, so that's fun. Um, and, you, and so that has a cooldown, too. You can set the LEDs like once every minute or so. Um, what are we doing? We're going into revive newt, and then we'll go into the newts, and then we'll start her up. Sean de Black, thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Very much appreciated. Okay, yeah, so we'll leave this running. Oh, thank you, Rootvik. Uh, we we can do this. We'll do that like well, we'll go a little bit smaller like that, and then we'll put this down right about here. Yeah, this is my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch. 
<laughs> What's up, Gonza? Uh, we're just getting started. Um, we still haven't said hello to everyone yet, so you're, you're still technically early, even though we're 30 minutes into the stream. Um, and... There should be a newt. Where's the newt? Come back, newt. There it is. Okay. <laughs> this is our revive newt. They're going to hang out with us for a while. Um, I think I think we've covered all the basics, right? But yeah, yeah. So for the LED, if you do exclamation mark LED followed by eight zeros or ones, uh, it'll turn on the corresponding thing. There's a cooldown. Uh, let's acknowledge all the new followers. And then we'll say hi to everybody. James, welcome to the Coding Garden. What's up, Ping Pong and Lawrence and Good Vibes and Dab Scratch and Red Dots and Rootvik uh, and Almighty Mech. Thank you for being here. Uh, Skywalkie, thanks for the follow. Uh, Sam, thank you for following. Uh, Ryan Aaron Green, thank you for following. Lily, thank you for the follow. Uh, Simon, thanks for the follow. Just Rec, thanks for being here. Turbo Biscuit, much appreciated. Uh, Daniel, thank you for the follow. Uh, Real Good Kid, much appreciated. And Squaw. Squaw, thank you for the follow. <laughs> yeah, we're doing Code Wars tonight. Um, so we say. But we're no, we are. We are. We're definitely, we have a kata that we've been working on. Squaw. And uh, thank you to SNA for that follow as well. Um, the mustache inspires. Well, thank you. Des, des, I don't know how to say your name. Desjosej? Desjosej. Um, okay. We got redemptions. What do we got? We got a stretch from Mike. Thank you, Mike, for the stretch. We got a hydrate from Slake. Galaxy Cup. We got Vape Juice Jordan with the stretch. I think we already did this, but that's okay. <laughs> Is it DJ CJ? A desertage. <laughs> it's French. Um, and PCM, thank you for that stretch as well. And Greeny, thank you for the posture check. Alrighty, let's say hi to everybody. So if you'd like me to say uh, hello to you, uh, you can say, hi, hello, morning, afternoon, uh, evening, howdy, um, or, um, I think it's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Just say those things. If you say any of those things, uh, my, the chat is now filtered. The chat only shows things that match this regular expression. Um, if you're new to regular expressions, this is a an expression that is regular, and <laughs> it matches against the text. Howdy, howdy, howdy. So we're going back in time, watch me. Back in time, to uh, 35 minutes ago when this Code Rocks said hey. Congrats to this Code Rocks, to, is the first person that said hello today. It's possible that they weren't the first person, but they're the first person that said hello, and they have not said hello again. So they get a reward, they get a heart from me. Um, here you go to... Um, this code rocks. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and what's up, Dimitri and um, Razor One? Welcome, welcome. I feel like it's it's been a few streams. Thank you for being here. And Ahmed, hello, hello. And Space Script and Redstone and Oxnox and the Sheep Boss and Sight Mitchin and Revive Newt. Good morning. What's up, Dejosage and Kovinx and Thon and Zaka King and Brazen and Demon, who says I'm gonna come back in three hours. <laughs> well, uh, good luck at work. Thank you for dropping by. What's up, Shines Love? And I'm Tom Eddy, and Falcon, and Warwick, and Greeny, and NovaScript, and Free Debugs. Hopefully you're still here, Free Debugs. <laughs> we're, we're finally at the part where we say hello to everyone. Um, are you here? You are. Uh, we'll do the, the hi oh, hi yo. This one. hi yo, hi yo. Uh, what's up, Slake, and Cheyenne, and John, and Bearcool, and uh, Drew Kill, and Brookserker, and Big Daddy, and Turco, and Stratage, and Finzo, and Alka, and Toasted Cheeses, and Turtle Monkey, and Andrew Lane. Uh, we talked about that. We did ribs web scraping this morning. What's up, Malik and Pavat and Red Dots and Raphael? I've been saying hi for at least 10 streams, not a single hey. Hey, <laughs> if you're here at the beginning, I will say hi. What's up, Raphael? Let's all share, share some love to Raphael. Let's send him some hearts. We're here for him. I don't mean I don't mean to miss you, but if you here's the thing: if you come in late and the stream is really busy, it's it's very possible that I miss I miss you and I don't get to say hi. So hello. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Uh, what's up, Oscar and Nick? And Plugles, what's the difference between sub-tiers? Uh, they just cost different money, uh, and you'd get potentially different rewards. So right now, th these two emotes are a... These two emotes are a tier... You can only use these if you're a tier 2 sub, and then this emote you can only use if you're a tier 3 sub. Um, 
if you all remember Tony from Noob Quest, he actually, he's a graphic designer. He created these. I, I'm going to commission like three more of them because I technically have five uh, tier tier two slots. So I'm missing, I have three tier two slots open. And then I have four more tier three slots open where I can add emotes. But that's one of the benefits. I think that's the main thing. And you get like a, a like you get badge flare. Like if you look at Revive Newt, see how it has the sparkles? It's because uh, they're a tier three. Um, what's up, Amazon? Welcome to the show. Hello, Shifty, and Akash, and Alma, and Sequel Gordster, and Rootfic, who says, new follower and sub on YouTube. Uh, and you are a really good programmer. I love your videos and your energetic personality. Well, thank you for being here, Rootfic. What's up, Hunter, and uh, Juan Curdy, who has a question, why don't I use PHP? Um, I just use JavaScript. <laughs> like, um, I used PHP a long, long time ago, but I really like JavaScript. I like the job. I like the the Node.js ecosystem. I like the fact that I can use the same language on the front end and the back end. Um, yeah, I like JavaScript. What's up, uh, Sebaludo? I'm about to start uh, streaming while I code some projects in Spanish. Oh, very nice, very cool. Is, are you gonna do it here on Twitch? Yeah, yeah, you're very welcome. Um, is there really a sticker mule team? <laughs> uh, let's see, have you streamed? Uh, Cordobo in Quarantena in Warzone. Oh, you're playing games. <laughs> Wait, is this how you say quarantine in Spanish? I feel like there should be like accents on the letters or something like that, but uh, free debugs. Uh, <laughs> I will tell you this. So I've only, so I've, I've only not gotten a job at, there's been two companies I've applied to in the world that I did not get a job at and Sticker Mule is one of them. Um, they didn't even give me an interview. Um, I applied, like I sent in my resume. I heard back like two months later and they're like, well, we're sorry, you do not re meet our qualifications. So, <laughs> um, and hello Bato and LocoDev and Gonza and uh, DXWO and Lechi, who says, how are you on this fine day staying positive? I am, I'm actually feeling much more energized than I was this morning. Um, surprisingly enough, cause I had like a full day of work, but I did take a nap, but I'm feeling good. And what's up, Shark Turn Up? And Eli the Coder, and Skywalkie, and Wet Goose, and Cleverson. Welcome, welcome. What's up, Zizzin? And Yataic, when are you starting to code? This is the age old question. And the answer is in probably 10 minutes or less. 10 minutes or less. Take your Place your bets now. What's up, Leet Rose, and Sean, and Alex, and uh, Kid Tango, and A Random Tim, and 100 De Hamon, and Unhot, and Tom, and PCM, and Dev Henrique, and Deep Space, and Schwarz, and so much Clark, who says, Howdy is the cluttered greeting. Oh, the cultured, the cultured greeting cluttered. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, what's up, Simon? And call me uh, Ankabo and Jatesh. Howdy, partner. What's a newt? Uh, we have this thing in the chat called a revive newt. <laughs> they're, they're actually, they're a person. Sorry for tagging you, but they're a person. <laughs> uh, but also a newt is a type of salamander. That's what I learned. I did my research. So a newt is a type of salamander and a, um, but not all salamanders are newts. And newts are, um, are amphibious. And I, actually, I think they actually spend more time out of the water. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's it. You can look at the Wikipedia page. And what's up, Veronica and Joa and uh, UK, uh, UK, UK Luke. I was gonna say ukulele. What's up, UK Luke? <laughs> what's up, Cyber Samurai? And Mr. Terrible and Sean One and Tarek Coding Garden. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, who says, saying hello, thanks for the interesting and very smart and informative streams. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks for being here. What's up, Greeny? Greeny was the first one in the chat, the first person I saw. But hello, welcome. What's up, MJP and Jacoho and Lucien Tassara from Argentina. Welcome, El Aventuro and Demigod. Good morning. What's up, Sophia? Uh, Squaw, yeah, we'll, we'll explain Code Wars right when we get started. And what's up, JD0423CP? Today, I'm going to build the auth server you built with Tony, although I wanted to check how to work with cross-site cookies for JWTs, uh, what I recommend. Don't do it cross-site, if you can, if you can manage. Uh, cross-site cookies are tricky. Uh, they're very tricky. Like, you can get them working, but they're tricky. I'll just say that. Yeah. Uh, and what's up, Turbo Biscuit? I just started watching the YouTube, and I love the way you teach. Oh, thank you very much. It's so easy to learn new things. <laughs> nice, very cool. What's up, HVBO? Uh, work was good. Got a lot done, had some meetings. What's up, same place things? It's been a while. Welcome back from a vacation. I realize you've already been back, but um, check out same place things. They're a mod here. 
and um, they stream on Twitch. What's up, Sunman? You created a Twitch account to view my stream. Well, I appreciate you. And what's up, Real J Breezy? What are my thoughts on Pug or Jade? It's a thing. Murdoch, 43 minutes in, <laughs> in time to make the greetings. Well, welcome, Murdoch. I think, I think, like, that's the life hack. If you don't like the first 40 minutes where it takes me to, like, say hello to everyone, just show up, like, an hour in, and we'll get, we'll be getting started, because we're almost done. Look at us. Um, yeah, Pug and Jade are fine. They're, they're a templating technology. How would I go about creating a status page for my API, like how GitHub has status pages? Uh, typically, a status page just does some sort of health check. So it's a separate server, so that way it's not affected by downtime. And bear cool. It says 56 minutes to finish the kata since it's episode 56. It's possible. I don't even know if it's going to take us that long because we're already about 60% done. But we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, but thank you for the bits. <laughs> um, but yeah, your the, the status checking server should be separate from your actual server. So that way it doesn't go down if your server goes down. And it can just do like a ping. You can do a ping or it can make a request to a health check endpoint. Like you could literally just create an endpoint on your server called health check. And um, it responds with a 200 status code if everything is good. And inside of that request handler, you could connect to your database or do anything else that does make sure that the API is good to go. And then your separate site would consistently make requests there to make sure that it's up and going. Uh, and Pug and Jade are cool if you're doing server-side rendering. Those are my thoughts. <laughs> What's, welcome, uh, Boozanamin. Welcome to the show. What's up, Euclidean Ace and Admiral and Santa, uh, Sant Davalos. Welcome to the show. Is there a benefit in using Yarn instead of NPM? Uh, no. You'll potentially seem cooler to your coworkers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so it used to be that Yarn did a lot of better things than NPM, but NPM has come around. They've been upgraded, and um, it works in a very similar way. Uh, Yarn does have a thing called workspaces, which I don't think NPM has. Yarn might be better at caching things, but I'm pretty sure NPM starts, has started to cache things. Yeah, use what you like. What's up, Arthur? Welcome to the show. We did it, everyone. We said hi. <laughs> what project am I most proud of? You all. I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I've, I've, uh, I'm a part of this community. I was going to say I've created this community, but I've, I've fostered this community. I am proud of that. That's the, my, my, my biggest achievement in life. And what's up, XX Dave and Dead Triggered? Welcome to the Coding Garden. I'm using Franker Faces. I thought I was. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you're an editor on FFC. See? These are our FFC emotes. Why do you ask me this question, Elka? <laughs> what qualification did I not meet? Uh, I think it, like it was. It's. I might not have been senior enough at the time. I'm still not senior enough for a lot of jobs. I don't know. They just add a customized accent color. I don't even know what that is. But we got some redemptions. We're gonna go through these. Look at this. We've got two focus modes. We're gonna use those to talk about like what is Code Wars, and we'll get right into the code. And JDO, thank you for the hydrate. I realize I have, I have two cups on my table for whatever reason. I think this water is from this morning. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's stale water. No, that's not good water. Uh, mean Fox, thank you for the posture check. Oh, set up your accent color. Oh, I'll have to take a look. Uh, PCM, thank you for the hydrate. Cheers. Arthur, thank you for that stretch. Free debugs with a posture check. Did we did we have redemptions the last time? I don't even know the last time you were here, free debugs, but thank you for being here. And demigod, thank you for the hydrate. Cheers. <laughs> All water is good water. <laughs> and uh, revive newt, thank you for the hydrate as well. And slake. And revive newt with posture check. All right, we got two focuses mo focus modes, so let's do it. Um, this is all new stuff. Oh, welcome! I'm glad. I'm glad you could you could experience it. Um, all right, focus. Start. 16 minutes. Whoosh. Here we go. All right. So if you have never heard of Code Wars, this is a website where you can solve coding problems. Um, they have user submitted coding problems, and they range in difficulty all the way from 8Q. So 8Q is the easiest, and 1Q is the hardest. Uh, 2Q is where we're at today. So it's actually like fairly hard. Um, there's some pretty. Uh, deep or like <laughs> some some javascript features we're using you might not have heard of um and you might be new to so we're gonna we'll talk about that uh, but the site is really cool you can choose your programming language that you want to use to solve them I mean, it's really good for just practicing solving problems uh, it's really good for um like building your logic and, and building your ability to solve coding problems like this 
Um, and I like it. And I've been doing it for a very long time. Um, let's see. This is episode 56. If you go to this YouTube playlist, you can see all of the past episodes. I'd be a level one. What does that mean you're really good? So here's the tricky part. 8Q is the easiest. 1Q is the hardest. It's reversed. Um, so 8, 8 is easy, 1 is hard. Uh, but yeah, if you go to this playlist, it goes all the way back to the beginning of the coding garden um, up until uh, last week, which is where we left off. Um, and um, I will say, like, people have asked me, like, why do I prefer this over something like Leak Code? I like this because if you're in the 8Q and 7Q range, these problems actually are very doable for beginners. So, like, if you if you already know, like, the basics of a language and um, you're, like, learning about the basics of, like, loops and conditionals, like most of the eight cues are, are very good to like get started and, and get your bearings on leak code things get hard really quick um so there's that but here two q one q those do get very hard um we have a github repo so if you get go to github.com slash coding garden slash code dash katas all of the solutions from past episodes are here um and you can see them and so the the code from last time is well it's, yeah it is here episode 55 uh but we're, we're basically just going to copy that over and we're going to work from that but if you have a suggestion for a kata so if you start using the website you can open up an issue as you can see there are a lot of issues but typically if we don't know what we're going to do at the beginning of an episode we'll go in here and find one to do but we're already working on one so there's that and then this is the one that we're working on right now. And I'll explain what the problem is, and then we'll get coding. So this problem is called class list. Basically, you have to implement a list data structure. However, it's a special list data structure in that it allows for infinite data. So this isn't like a linked list. It's not really like an array. It's a, it's a very interesting concept. And I'll, I'll probably show you the code to give you an example of like how what it means to be an infinite list. Uh, but if you were, if, if this were just a regular plain old list, this would kind of be like uh, computer science 101 implement a list with all of these methods. So we have a list class. It has methods like head, tail, last, init, length. Uh, we can do things like reverse, append. Um, I guess we have like filter methods that we haven't got into. We're going to be working on today, like any or all. Um, what else? And then there are uh, static methods like... Uh, and these are the ones that make it really interesting. So you have things like iterate, repeat, cycle, uh, and then you have all your instance methods. So let's let's pull up the code. Code kata, code kata, code lattes. <laughs> all right. Task complete. I have CD'd into the folder. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy episode 55 into a new folder, episode 56, uh, so that uh, if people that watch episode 55 will see where I left off. But we're going to keep we're going to uh, keep doing it from there. Um, so the cool thing about this site is you actually can write the code directly on the site. So you can click on train, and then you write your code here, and then they have actual uh, test suites that you need to pass down here. However, is a tiny little box. And it's not very conducive to uh, do teaching live on stream. So um, I like I actually just copy these tests. I pull them down locally, and then we've been writing the code locally. Um, okay, so we've got episode 56. Um, I'm just going to what's the command npm clean install? Is that what that does? Yeah, look at that. Pro tip. If you need to remove your node modules and install your dependencies all in one go, you can do npm ci. Um, okay, uh, and we should be able to do npm run test. Nice. Typically, you want to leave yourself with a failing test so you know where you left off, but I'll show you the code. <laughs> the, the, the tests are passing. So um, we have uh, we have our uh, our test file here, which has all of our tests. Uh, basically, what we're, we're using a testing library called Jest, and because we copy and pasted the tests from Code Wars, it had some like Code Wars specific test things like test.it and test.assert deep equals. So all we did was alias those things to be the actual um, Jest globals. So we have that. But what I want to show you to give you an idea for how this stuff works is something like this. So we are basically implementing this list class and it has methods like this. So if you say list.repeat1 dot take 10, send it to a list, that should send that should return an array of 10 ones, right? Um, 
but he, th this is the interesting thing about it is it's technically like technically the list you've created is infinite because you could say list dot repeat one dot take a million and it should work in that it returns an array of a length million with one million ones and so similarly list repeat two take ten re returns an array of length ten uh, with twos inside of it and so this special to list function is the thing that actually like serializes it into an array and thank you anonymous for the gift to streamlabs it's actually pretty cool because we can make a raid command that shows the sub emotes thank you anonymous <laughs> thanks anonymous um, cool. So, and then we have list repeat three take ten, and all of these methods we're implementing on a list can be chained, so you can call them one after another. And then the to list command basically turns it into an array, so that it could be used in other places. Um, but you, then you have things like this. So list dot iterate, you pass in an incrementer. Let's actually just put that in line because I think it's this is the only place we use it. So. Um, why is it complaining? Come on. Maximum line length. Whoa. <laughs> well, that's a lot. Okay. Um, here, but it's, it's easier to see, so that's better. Where, where, where was I? This. Okay, so we have to say list.iterate. You pass in a function, and basically this function will be called on the current value, and you, you give it a starting value, and then you say take 10. And uh, that in turn generates a list that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So basically, this is our starting value. Hey, Majestic Eye! What's up, friend? <laughs> Four months. Thank you for being here. Um, and thank you for the reset, very much appreciated. So uh, you have your starting value and then you have a function that will be called on the value each time. So technically you could pass in a function that does minus or multiplication and you could pass in any starting value, but the list that you generate needs to match those rules. Um, you then also have, uh, this is this is what makes things super interesting is you have list.cycle. So you say list from list, you pass in a, an array of one, two, three, and this is a cycling list. So whenever you say take 10, that gives you back an array of length 10, but it cycles through the initial value. So you get one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Um, and so that would do that. How would you iterate a Fibonacci sequence? That's a good question. I think we technically could do it because um, you could say start at one. Well, no, you would, yeah, and then you need the previous, but no, you would need the previous value. I don't think it works this way because you wouldn't have access to the previous value, or you would, right? Right? <laughs> um, so that's cycle. And as you can see, we started with an array of like three. Oh, Fibonacci is one of the upcoming problems. Well, there we go, we're gonna do it today. Um, and then uh, you say take, and then it, it cycles the list. Um, you then also have list.replicate. Um, which says, this is the value we want, and we want to replicate it 10 times. Um, so this time replicate it 10 times. Um, we can work with empty lists and then we can work with that. So uh, what I'm showing you here are the tests. So this is like the, the consumer view of how the list works, but we have actually written the code to implement all of these methods. Like we basically, we started with a blank file. We started with a blank JavaScript file with just a class list. And we have slowly added all of these static methods and all of these methods to get, get these, these tests working. And hello, a goof, uh, a goof from Argentina. Welcome. So those are the uh, like the infinite list style things, and then we have these tests up here. So we should be able to create lists from arrays. Um, we should be able to get the head of the list. We should be able to get the tail, which is all of the elements in the array except for the first. Uh, we should be able to get specific indices in the list. Um, we should be able to basically like slice the last in number of items off of the list. Um, we should be able to remove the first element from the list or the first n number of items from the list. Um, we should be able to um, have this function called nil, which, te which tells us if the list is empty, returns true. If it's not, it returns false. Um, we have this cons function, which, removes, which um, I guess uh, prepends that value to the array. Um, what else do we have? Um, and then a list.append. So basically you can say list from list and then append another list from list and that gives you a list uh, that has both of those lists inside of it. So up until, the, up until this point, we have written all of the code required to get all of these tests passing and now we are here. <laughs> so we're uncommenting these one by one and, and solving them one by one. 
The next function that we need to implement is slice. So we'll do that. But first, I'll give you a quick walkthrough of the code itself. So um, and for example, let's see how uh, something like cycle is implemented. So if you take a look at, uh, or let's look at this one, repeat one, take 10. Let's show you how we actually implemented this. So let's look at the, uh, the repeat method. So uh, the way we're doing this in JavaScript is with generators. And a generator is a function that can essentially return multiple values. So each time it's called, it can actually uh, return a new value. And uh, so this repeat function takes in the value that you want to repeat. And then we create uh, a generator function that basically just yields that value forever. We, so no matter, uh, no, you can call this, you can call this function over and over and over again, but every time you call it, you're just going to get that exactly exact same value. And you see here that we have this while true loop, and you may think, oh no, well the the, the code is going to get stopped up and just stay there forever, but it doesn't because this is this is very similar to async await if you're familiar with that, because when the function yields a value, it actually pauses the execution, and then the next time the generator is called. Um, the execution continues and then it yields the next value. Uh, and LJP, thank you for the 100 bits. So um, the, what we're looking at here is a generator function. You see function star and then you see the fact that it's yielding a value. I'll show you really quick on MDN. Um, I forget how we did it. It's a function, function star, I think. Mm. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> Um, so here's a, here's a simple example of a generator function. So uh, this generator function takes in a value, and then the first time we call the generator, we're going to get back that value itself. You see that it says yield, yield i. But then if we call that same instance of the generator again, we're going to get the returned value i plus 10. Um, and then if we call that generator again, it'll say that um, we are done. Uh, there is no more. There are no more. No more values that can be yielded from this function, um, and so uh, basically, like we have our generator function here. Hey, Helium! Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Uh, but we have our generator function, and whenever you invoke it, that returns an instance of that generator function. So we've invoked it with ten. We now have an instance, and the first time we invoke that function, it's going to yield back. 10. So if we say generator.next, and so dot .next is how you get the next value out of the generator, um, that will give you back the value 10. And then if you say generator.next, that's going to give you back the value 10 plus 10, which is 20. And then if you say generator.next, it'll just say that the generator is done and it, it will not generate any more values. Um, now, technically, technically, we probably could implement our own generator without like this special star and yield syntax, but this makes it really convenient. And uh, generators are, are also essentially iterators. So you can do like for, for of loops or for in loops. Um, let's look at our entries function. Didn't we use for of somewhere or for in? Do we have wild true loops everywhere, literally? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So that's that's the other interesting thing about it is um, you don't have to manually uh, create an instance and then call. Well, you will have to create an instance, but you don't have to manually call next on it. Uh, you can use like a for of loop, and behind the scenes, JavaScript knows to iterate and basically call next for you. Um, and then yeah, generators can yield each other. So I'll show you an example of that. But really quick, back to the example of repeat. So whenever we pass in the initial value like one. We then create a custom generator function that basically yields that value forever. This is what gives us an infinite list because it, it's just going to keep yielding back the exact same value no matter how many times we call it because it's in this infinite loop here. Um, and then we create a list instance with that generator function. So our, our list class takes in a generator function and then it can do those things or do, do the things. Um, and so in the test, we see repeat the value one and then we have this function called take. So the function take. Um, basically um, creates a new instance of a list. However, it specifies an end value. So our, our list constructor, constructor takes in a start index and an end index. And the end index uh, defaults to infinity. But whenever we say take 10, we now have an instance of a list that will end after 10 values have been yielded from the generator. Um, so we've done that. And then we have to say to list. And so the to list function is basically what's going to call that iterator or that generator function as many times as we need um, to get back the values. Yeah, and while true doesn't block the, but block the thread because after a value is yielded, the execution pauses. And let's take a quick stretch. Yeah, 
So uh, like in this example, um, when we say generator.next, that's just going to, it's gonna run this function, it's gonna get to this line of code, it's basically gonna return the value 10, and then now it's paused. And it, the, the function, the code inside the function won't run again until we say generator.next, and then the next value will be yielded. Um, so that's basically what's happening in this, this infinite while loop is, um, uh, where was I? Repeat, yeah. So the first time the generator is called, it's gonna yield this value. It's gonna pause the execution. And then when the generator.next is called again, the code will go here, it'll go here, and then it'll yield the value again. Thank you very much, Moist Booty Boy. <laughs> Thank you for the stuff. <laughs> Mr. Sir, thank you for being here. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, yield the value. It'll, the execution pauses, and then the next time it's called, it goes back around to the beginning of the while loop. It's like, oh, well, true, let's keep going. And then it yields the value again. Um, okay, so there was that. And then uh, let's look at to list, because that's the thing that basically serializes it into an array. Um, and so we, we created our, our nice little um, helper function called entries, but basically that, and, and so this is the other cool thing about generators is, um, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. The other cool thing about generators is you can use them in uh, the spread operator. So you might have seen like spreading a string into an array before or spreading two arrays into another array to concat them. But the other cool thing is because generators are iterable, you can use the spread operator to spread, or basically turn the result of that generator function into values inside of an array. Um, and so that's what we're doing here. We've, we've write, written this custom function called entries that spreads all of the values into an array. And then if we look at the entries function, uh, it basically just iterates the generator, right? So we're doing a for of loop. We, we just as easily could have done, a gener we could have manually called generator.next, but it basically, we create an instance of the generator, we start at zero, and then um, while the current index is greater than or equal to our start and less than our end, we continue to yield the value. Um, and so, uh, th this entries is going to iterate and yield the values, and until finally, the, if the index is greater than the end amount, then we're going to break. Um, and so that's our entries function. And all of the other functions we have, um, so that's like two lists, but all the other functions we're calling, like uh, head, uh, get, all these things are, are basically diff potentially different generator functions um, that do things in, in different ways. Hey! Dad of Dom, thank you very much. <laughs> great content. A fun problem and a great teacher teaching. Yeah. Infinite lists. It's a, it's a fun thing. So why a generator? I stepped away and missed if there was an explanation for that approach. Mainly the fact that it can, uh, we can do things like, uh, like this. We can literally uh, yield values forever. And, and technically, by default, uh, that one list we saw, the end was actually infinity. So technically, we could actually yield values forever. Now, of course, you would run out of memory if we tried to do something like that. Um, but that's why certain instances have a, a, an explicit end, and that's how we can basically yield values from this generator until we've reached the end amount. Um, but that's the main reason we're using a generator. We, we technically could implement this manually. Um, like, we could have some sort of internal state. Um, we could have a function that keeps track of what value to return next. And then we could have a function called next, which we invoke that gives us the next value. But generators are really the main way to do this in, um, in JavaScript. A for loop. <laughs> um, cool. So Doc is saying generators are actually the basic basics of how all async functions work are implemented. They're generators that return promises, basically, for sure. And so uh, generators are supported uh, way farther back in JavaScript than async await is. If you look at uh, can I use and you take a look at uh, generator functions, ES6 generators, I mean, they're not supported in IE, but they go all the way back to Edge version 13, Firefox version 26, Chrome version 39. They've, they've been around for a, for a long time, and they've been supported for a long time. Um, but if you look at uh, async await, uh, it, it hasn't had support for as long. Um, so uh, you can see that async uh, await was not introduced in Firefox until version 15, not introduced, or sorry, uh, until Edge until 15, not introduced in Firefox until version 52. Whereas here, it was, it's been in Firefox since, uh, generators have been in Firefox since version 26. Um, uh, meaning, and I guess the point I was getting to is if you've ever used a tool like Babel, 
and you have like the regenerator runtime, um, typically it's actually transpiling your async await code into generator code because any code that is written with async await can basically be rewritten to be a generator instead. Yeah. Lights. What, what happened to the lights? <laughs> And uh, Thon is asking, are generators needed these days? I think you can you can solve problems without generators, but they are very useful. And it's like a, a lower level language construct that allows us to do like more serious async things in um, uh, in JavaScript. And Cleverson says, state? That's not functional. <laughs> Come on. Uh, why do you return a new instance of a list? Um, Albatron, async await, I think. Oh, oh a sit awake. <laughs> Thank you for it. Wait, was that a, was that a sub? Uh, two month resub. Thank you for the two month resub. I sit and I wait. Uh, I don't know if that's what you meant, but I think it's funny. Um, <laughs> no, so like technically the, the generator still has to, it has to store the, the data in memory somewhere. Um, but because it is a function invocation, like that memory is technically only exists in a certain space after when it's being used. I dyed my hair green. I don't know. This is enough explaining. Let's start writing some code. Um, I probably missed a lot of chats. Feel free to ask a question again if you do have a question. But what we're gonna do? Well, first of all, let's run our test. Make sure we're make sure we're st we're still passing. And then we're gonna get into that slice function. And it, this potentially will all make a little bit more sense the more code that I write, because you're actually gonna see me attempt to implement these functions. So um, the next function we're gonna implement. <laughs> my my laugh restores faith in humanity. Thank you, Ryan. Um, this one here, slice. So we're gonna we're gonna make this work. And uh, so yeah, somebody asked why are we, are we returning a new instance. The reason we're returning a, a new instance is because uh, we don't want the the chained function calls to modify the original list because we need to be able to chain function calls in in multiple ways. Um, and like really, the the only time we actually want the list itself is when we do something like to list. So which is which is why when we're saying like list from list um, or each of these each of these functions we call returns a new instance of a list is because we don't want to modify the the instance how would it differ than say array size fill value uh, we could make it work that way but um, the simple fact is and I'll show you um, we can say list dot replicate 10 one to list um, we also could say list dot replicate we could chain a function on it, chain another function, and then say to list. And that does not modify like the, the internal state to change the other lists that have been generated or how lists should be generated, I guess. I may not be explaining this correctly, but um, basically uh, the to list function is the thing that's actually gonna turn it into an array. So this like array of size fill, that's more similar to just the to list function. Uh, whereas everything else is kind of like internal state and generators, and it's basically ready to generate values, but it's not generating those values just yet. Um, okay, so now our test should fail because we don't have a slice function. Uh, and the test says list from list.slice is not a function. So we need to make a slice a function. Um, we talked about uh, static versus regular, uh, static methods versus instance methods. And so uh, these functions like list.empty, list.fromList, list.repeat, uh, these are uh, static methods. Actually, that's why we're returning an instance, is because these are static methods, uh, meaning these are, these are methods that are not on an instance of a list. They, they exist on the list class itself, and then they return instances of a list. Um, you technically could create your own instance if you really wanted to, but you can see in the test, there is no, uh, in the test, they don't ever pass a generator function in because technically we could have implemented it any way we want. That's mainly why we're doing that. And thank you, Murdoch, for the focus mode. We'll get into that. Skip ahead to map and filter and figure out the rabbit hole before doing slice. Thank you, Doc. Doc has been really helping us on this. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> um, and we'll go to a focus mode. I can't, uh, don't, Remind me to go into focus mode, because I actually just exited that. Let's acknowledge these follows. Welcome, people. Welcome to the Coding Garden. Thank you to Christinas and Mickey and Zeus and Marcellos and Agov and Carlos and Forever and uh, Testy Cleo, Cleso, Clecio and Oasin and Ryan. Thank you all for following. We appreciate you. Generators for array manipulation already is the rabbit hole. I could believe, I could believe it. Um, oh, we have three focus modes. We're about to write some code, people. 
I'm dead. Thank you for the hydrate. Cheers. Well, actually, no, we did these. Yeah, we did these. Never mind. We did those. And uh, Slake, thank you for the hydrate. And uh, Ascentosaur, thank you for the posture check. And Mutant Spew, with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much, Mutant Spew. <laughs> and JDO, thank you for the hydrate. Um, okay. I was wrong. It was more than 30 minutes. Yeah, it's going to take us a while. <laughs> All right, so on Doc's recommendation, we're actually not going to implement Slice. We're going to get into Map and Filter, um, because I think these actually do have side effects. So we should be able to map a value. Let's see what happens. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this. <laughs> um, so the test is failing because Map is not a function, and so we're going to create an instance method that is a function. Um, I'll go ahead and do that focus mode. That was redeemed. Let's write some code. Um, so, static methods, they exist on the class, not the instance, but then we have instance methods like take, head, tail. Hey, Shaye! Thank you very much for the upgraded sub, originally from Bosifius. Thank you, Bosifius, for introducing Shaye to uh, the coding garden. Much appreciated. Uh, I don't know if you introduced them, but you convinced them, I guess, to, to resub um, by subbing for them. I don't know. Uh, get is an instance method, length is an instance method, drop nil, cons, append, all of these are functions that we can call directly on an instance of a list, and we need to implement an instance method called map. So let us do it. Um, and Shaye gifted us up? Wait, what's happening? Am I reading these things wrong? Whoa! <laughs> Did that not show up on my overlay? Shaye, thank you very much. Wait, so you, you subbed? And then you gifted subs? I think my overlays are broke. It did show up? Okay, I think I missed it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shaye, for the gifted subs. <laughs> much appreciated. Okay, we need a method called map. So what we gotta do is we can create a function called map. Um, and actually... No, this is, a, this is a static method, I believe. Wait, from list returns an instance of a list. No, no, this is an instance method. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um... And so map takes in our, our mapping function. Basically, this is the function we need to call on each value inside of the list. So this is going to take in the map function. This might need to be a static list. I don't know. I'll, I'll, we'll figure this out. And then we call to list on it. And then to list um, uses the instance itself. OK. Have a hint. Memoized generator with this.entries. Too much. I think we're in too deep. I was way too confident about this. <laughs> oh, okay, but regardless, uh, so map takes in a function, um, and then to list. I guess we'll have to see if there is like a map function, and if there is, then it's going to call that on each of the instances for to list. I think that's how I'll implement it, um, and I, I think that's really all I'll do is I'll say map equals. So we'll just say like this dot map function equals map function. Like that. So uh, it sets the instance, and then when we call to list, we'll check if it's there, and if it is, we're going to use that val the mapped value rather than uh, the value itself. So if we look down at to list, that's calling entries, and so right now we're yielding value, but I could say if this dot map function is a thing, um, then we're going to yield uh, this dot map function uh, with the value itself. Uh, otherwise, we yield the original value. So now, for all other cases, we yield like we originally did, but now if there's a map function, we're actually gonna pass that value into the mapped function. No, use generators. <laughs> uh, for each element in the list, yield f of x. Yeah, you're right, okay. You're reminding me of how we actually should do this. <laughs> and so uh, map, I think, should turn a new, inst a new instance of the list, okay. So it should do um, return, return a new instance of the list? Then we'll have our, our custom like map generator um, with this dot start and this dot end, right? Right? And then our map generator um, cool. So map generator. So this is a uh, a generator function that needs to yield all of the values in this dot entries. Um, yield basically returns a single value pauses the execution, and then when the function, the generator is called again, it can return a new value with yield. Quick stretch. 
Hmm. And actually, let's see how we did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I, I see. So look, look at how we did it with uh, the list function. So we said this dot entries. Um, so basically, I think we need for value of, um, and we'll create an instance of the generator. So we did this kind of like we did in entries, like like this. Watch me, watch me. Um, or what, what Doc was saying to do it over entries. No, I, I'll do. We'll do this. So for each value in the generator, um, then we yield that mapped function with the value, like that. You're doing good. <laughs> so um, basically, when you call map, we're creating a new instance of the list. We're creating our own custom generator that uh, yields the existing values of the generator. However, it passes them through the map function. This should get our test to pass, but we may need to do some refactoring um, later on when we're adding new, new, new things. Okay, we broke it. Ah! A maximum call text, I succeeded. <laughs> um, so we didn't, I guess we didn't have an initial end value. Let's see. So we said from list, map to list. So technically, from list should have an initial length. Is that that's what's happening? Because otherwise, it doesn't have an end. Because when we call our initial from list function, oh, this dot entries. Okay, instead of this dot generate, that makes sense. Because then, yeah, because otherwise we're overriding this. Yeah, 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 that makes sense because we're not actually doing start and end. Okay. Thank you, Doc. I'm telling you, Doc is Doc is here for us. <laughs> so we actually need to do uh, this dot entries instead of that. And this dot entries we've already coded to take, it, take into account um, uh, um, the start and the end. <laughs> if we look at our entries function. <laughs> Right, we have that logic that says if it's if it's greater than the start and it's less than the end, can then keep yielding it because what we actually just wrote there was an infinite loop that it blew the stack. We had a stack overflow. Hmm. I th I mean I think we're having the same problem. Like we actually don't have an end value. I think this is gonna break some of our previous tests, right? Because this is just saying map. Do we need to really bind this? Oh, buddy. <laughs> but do we not have a start? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. As you can see, it's not actually me coding tonight. It's all the people in the chat. There we go. Thank you. Claps for Andrew. You can also do your test pass emotes, but it's it's not me. I didn't make the test pass. <laughs> What's up, uh, Bippin? Okay, great. We have a passing test. We're going to get through this, everyone. Uh, binding is weird. Can you give a rough uh, explanation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before, uh, when I did not use bind, uh, this function had a different this value inside of it. Um, uh, the this value was the previous instance. And um, when I'm passing in the generator, I want the instance to be... Um, the, the, the current, it's oh, actually, no, so the, the, this value was the new instance. I wanted it to be the current instance so that it has all of the same information. So by saying bind this, um, we are now saying, well, this is actually creating a new instance of the generator function. The other way to do this and like the old way of doing it is you could say uh, self equals this. And then right here we could say uh, self dot entries and that, that should make it pass as well. Uh, basically, we're we're grabbing the current this value on the outside and making sure that it has the same this value on the inside. Pass, pass test, pass test. Cool. <laughs> but the other way to do it is you create a new instance of the function that has a pre-bound this, uh, and that's what this does. So bind returns a new function, where inside of this function, this is the value that you passed in originally. <laughs> is green my favorite color? Probably not. Can you get lexical this with generators? I don't think you can create a, a generator, a, like a uh, an arrow function generator. Can you? Yeah, 
yeah you, you can't you can't create like a i don't think you can do a star like this and so this is why we use arrow functions is because they have lexical this we don't have to worry about binding they have the this value of the code that's outside of them but we can't do generator this is yeah yeah usually you can use arrow functions but not for generators okay we've got a basic map <laughs> uh now we need a filter and the filter is going to work in a very similar way so Wait, is there is, are, is there a um, a proposal for uh, arrow function generators? Yeah, I I, I have I only have two tests, but those tests have a bunch of tests embedded inside of them. The main reason is I just copied this code from uh, Code Wars. Um, however, it would have made a lot of sense to re to to split these out into separate tests because right now our our yeah it's only saying two tests because they're all bunched into one test. Can I put that arrow function in the new list part? No, not quite. The, ma the main reason is the, we're, the this value inside of the function is where it matters. And we wouldn't really have a way of changing the this value inside of the function. Cool. All right. So our test is failing because we don't have a filter function. Filter is going to work almost exactly the same way. So let's just um, let's do this. So we have filter, we have our fil filter function. Um, then we're gonna call this our uh, filter generator. And the tricky part is right here. So basically we need to say, uh, hey, Shaye, more gifted subs. Thank you very much. Thank you for the gifted subs. Predicate. <laughs> So, um, should I call it predicate? I like it. You're right. Predicate. <laughs> this is the predicate function. The function that determines whether or not the value should show up in the resulting array. Um, uh, so we'll call this, like, include. And so we invoke it, and then we'll say, if include, then we yield that value. Or yield the included value. like that uh, because technically if include is false then it's going to skip it and it's going to move on to the next value so that actually should handle skipping over values watch this wow yeah we, we could we could simplify it um if predicate yield value should we simplify it though yeah why not that's nice <laughs> So this is about how last time went, where as as we as we pick up momentum, the code the code just writes itself. Um, but yeah, well it'll it might get harder. First try. <laughs> All right, what's the next test? Uh, we need to be able to uh, filter it, and um, it is using a boolean. This this actually this this test here should just pass. The simplification is slower. Who said that? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not really even worried about speed, and I don't think we have to be. Cool. So, um, this was just another test for testing for filter. Um, okay, so reverse. Ooh, how are we going to do this? I might need memoized generator this.entries in the map. When would I need that? But this should fail, and then I'm going to need to implement a reverse function. Um, okay. Something, something, side effects. Okay. I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Reverse is weird. How am I going to do this? Because... Uh, This.entries is a generator. How could I... I can't iterate a generator in reverse. I mean, technically, I would have to generate all of the values and then put them into the list. Oh, I would unshift instead of put... So right now, entries... Oh, no. Entries is an array. List dot from. Yeah, I guess that'd be the way to do it. So reverse. Um, return list dot from list this dot entries. 
Oh, no, this dot. Two list. Yeah, two list reversed. Um, is this going to break down, though? This will probably make this test pass. But technically, is it infinite? It's like we're, we're using a lot of memory because, so behind the scenes, whenever all this gets called, um, it has to actually generate the full list. You can't reverse an infinite list without a mathematics license. <laughs> so like this technically generates the full list and then just reverses it and puts it back into a list. I think this will make the test pass. Um, but I don't know if this is, yeah, like maybe we'll come across a case where this is bad. <laughs> but let's see. All right. Um, so this says list from list concat to list. Have we already implemented concat? Yeah, reverse does not work on infinite lists. We haven't, so we need a we need a concat function. What does concat do? Um, whoa! Oh, I see. So concat assumes that all of the values in your list are actually lists themselves. This is weird. Um, let me do this. Um, okay, so list from list, and then we actually pass in an array that has two lists inside of it. And then concat I mean, honestly, honestly, I think I think we could just yield entries from all the things in the in the in the list, right? 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 <laughs> Um, okay, so we need a concat function. Um, right? So, um, return a new list with the concat generator. We're going to create a concat generator. If I have a flat map, I can define them all in terms of flat map. Um, I guess what I'm what I'm worried about is so like we have our entries function, right? So we have um, let's look at entries and how entries is working. Yeah. Um, hello, count. Welcome to the show. So this yields each individual value. What I'm thinking is we basically need to check if that value itself is a generator or if that value itself is a list, then we actually need to yield the list itself. Concat is actually, a, oh yeah, let's go, look at, let's look at the description. That'll, that'll help us. Um, Cause this confuses me. If you do exclamation mark current kata, um, Oh, yield star value? I like that, Andrew. Yeah, if you do exclamation mark current kata, that'll give you a link to the kata that we're working on. It's this one. I can also send you the link. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, cool. So uh, we want to look at concat. So concat is a list flattened. List must be a list of lists. Behaves differently than concat in JavaScript. OK. So the list must be a list of lists. So we know that they actually are generators. So um, I think I, I think I can do this. So um, for const value, or we can even call it a list of um, this dot entries, because that's going to give us each individual list. We're going to do a yield star, and a yield star yields all of the values inside of that generator. Um, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it broke. Okay. Uh, undefined is not a function. Oh, list.entries. Right? Right? Because each, we know, if we're, if we're calling concat, we know that everything in the list is a list. So that way, it do, we know that it has an entries. Yeah. 
Uh, hello, Quibble. So I have, um, I used to use a Razer Blade as my streaming computer. I pretty much always have used a MacBook. Uh, and this is a MacBook, it's not a Hackintosh. Yeah, would you look at this? So this basically, all of the entries we know are lists. And each of those lists has a generator called entries. And yield star basically yields multiple values. I don't know, it's all just magic at this point. <laughs> all right, what's next? Uh, empty concat to list. So this should just should work because we've implemented all those functions. Yeah, working. Hey, no nitron. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub, very much appreciated. Ooh, from list, zip with. Oh, very interesting. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any pictures, but you can see all of my gear at that link. Thank you for the link. Um, and I'm thinking about um, posting lecture, pictures in the members only Discord channel pretty soon. Just as like a, a, a benefit for subbing to the channel. I'll take pictures of my studio and like show you my setup and stuff like that. And it looks like uh, you are a sub. So if you, if you join the Discord, link your Twitch account, um, you'll have access to those channels if you don't already have access to them. All right, we have this plus function. Is this the only place that it's you? Oh, no, no, that was times. Sorry, that was times. I kind of wanted to find this in line just so we can see it. All right, see you later, Lechi. Thank you, thank you for, for being here. Uh, exclamation mark Discord will get you to the Discord. What's up, Pixa? Welcome to the show. Yeah, we do use it multiple times. Okay, well, let's look at what times is. <coughs> times is a function that takes in two values and multiplies those two values. Couldn't they call it multiply <laughs> or product? <laughs> okay, so this is a function that takes in two values and multiplies them. Um, and we'll say list from list, zip with takes in a function and a list itself. And then we send it to a list. Okay, I think I can do this. Watch me. So zip with uh, takes in our zip function and it takes in the other list right right okay um, we're gonna do something similar to this uh, similar to this but different and I guess let's, let's read the description of zip because it does it assume that they're both the same length It doesn't say anything about that, but I'm just going to assume they're both the same length. Um, so let's call this the zip generator. And then the zip generator um, says for each value of this dot entries. I mean, technically, we just want to yield the zip function with that value and then the other list dot get this specific index. How can I get the index inside of, um, oh, flat map, look at that. Uh, it does not assume they're both the same length, and in fact, there are tests for that, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, basically, I need to see if the other generator is, is the same length, and if it's not, then um, we concat it onto the end or something like that, but um, regardless, um, yeah, I, I realize that. Um, so let's let's do it the right way. We're just going to use a, a for loop. Let i equals zero. While i is less than. Um, I guess we do have a length function, right? Less than th we could do less than this dot end. I plus plus. Um, and hey, ex co co loco, co co loco. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for the sub. Uh, flat map is the most powerful operator. We'll probably get into that. Uh, but let's say uh, the left generator is this dot gen fu function generator. I think we need to create an instance of the generator. Um, this create the instance. Where are we at? Zip, 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 here. So, we have our left generator. We have our right generator. And that's gonna be list.generator. 
um, then we have our left value and our right value. So our left value is going to be left generator dot next dot value. Um, I guess instead of doing until this dot end, I could do while left generator. Uh, how do I check if a generator is done? Um, yeah, check if it's done. How do I check if it's done? We can look up the syntax, but I feel like I've done this before. Next dot done. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Yeah, next dot done. Cool. So we have our left value. We have our right value. Yeah, I mean, we could call it A and B. I like left and right. Uh, we'll say if left value dot done, then we break. Meaning uh, we don't we don't need to yield anything else. Um, cool. Um, otherwise, we'll get the right value. And I guess I mean we could say if the right is done, we need to break. We then need to account for differing lengths. Um, I'll just do this for now. Uh, right right value. Yeah. Break, and then. If they both were not done, then we can just yield our zip function with the left value uh, dot value and the right value dot value. Um, and people always ask me, why do I change this from I++ plus plus to I equals plus one? I equals plus equals one. And the reason is my linter. So the Airbnb um, style guide prefers this. I think they prefer it because like this is potentially ambiguous that it accesses and then it increments where this is more explicit that you're accessing and incrementing i don't know but we're gonna do that because my linter prefers it and that whole for loop could just become a while loop yeah <laughs> it's fine uh while true yeah, yeah why not because we're breaking out of the loop anyways so while true just keep on keeping on and then eventually it's going to break out of the while loop if we're done. Why use a generator over a closer? It, it, it makes a lot of things easier. Like we would basically have to write our own generator style function or generator object that has next and done and an internal state. It's, this is nice. So this should work. Linter, style guy Tissa. <laughs> Thank you, Tipsy Ninja. It's been a while since I've seen you. Thanks for being here. I, I won't do blue hair because then I, then you won't be able to see it because I'm on a blue screen. Um, folder. Let's see what folder does. Um, folder. Write associative reduction of the list to a single value. So you mean reduce? <laughs> Why are they calling it folder? Um, reduce right. <laughs> okay. Um... Folder should only recursively evaluate necessary function arguments because it's called fold, not reduce. Well, it's full. Oh, fold right. I see. Not folder. <laughs> what, what's a folder? Uh, fold right. Oh, it's the name in functional programming. Okay, so fold right and then fold left. Cool. Um, sh should okay. Fold fold right. Um. Yeah, I'm familiar with the term, but we're in JavaScript, so I would just assume that they would call it reduce instead of fold. I don't know. It's short-circuiting or lazy its function. Okay. Uh, it should recursively evaluate necessary function arguments as to return a valid value from the nullary or unary function, even if the lift is infinite. Not quite reduce right in JavaScript. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this gives this. Where am I, I'm looking at this. This gives us a list which is x1 with the values x. Wait, what? I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, we have quite a few uh, commands that aren't listed there. We need to get those commands automatic. But what's up, John? Welcome to the show.
Um. Yeah, I honest, I don't skip. <laughs> Let's see. So uh, we have this folder function. So this is our, our our accumulator, accumulator value value, and then we have our. Um. Oh, it's a list. I see. It accepts a list as the value, and then we can call a list that some internal thing, and that's going to return the list itself. Whoa. Followers are a square root of two. One four one four two. What's the square root of one four one four two? Did it change? Did I do that right? One four. It's not. It's not a perfect square. <laughs> It's a cool number, though. I like that number. Thank you for the hydrate revive new. Cheers. Square root of two times a ten thousand. Oh. Ah. One four one four two. Okay, so try doing the eager evaluating fold right, like reduce right, and you can come back to the lazier short circuiting bit. I still have not wrapped my mind around how this is gonna work. Cells, thank you for the 10 bucks, who says, love watching your vids. Thanks, amigo, you're very welcome. <laughs> thank you for the tip. Um, okay, we can't give up, we just got, we just got tipped. Okay, folder is a function that accepts a function and accepts a list. We can start there. One step at a time. Folder. Fold right. <laughs> Calling it a folder. Uh, so we have our uh, fold function, and we have our uh, initial list, I guess. Like that. Okay. So far, so good. Um, now, this folder function has the accumulator accumulating value. Oh, okay, so this is like the initial value of the reduce. And so this initial value gets passed in as the first value in the fold, right? And Dejosej, or DJCJ, <laughs> says, folder, thank you for the 100 bits. <laughs> so this is like your initial value passed into reduce, and so that gets passed into the function. Um, and then we're gonna have each value in the list. Oh, no, no, no. Then you have each list, and you call this function on the previous list. Now, we implemented I think we implemented cons already, right? Cons one, cons one. So cons should be accepting a value. Oh no, it's different, no, no. So Z is the list. The first value in the function is actually each value in the, the entries of the array, or the entries of the list. That's weird, right? The fact that it's the second parameter? Okay. Um, let, let's just start writing code. Maybe something will happen. <laughs> so I can have my uh, fold generator. This is a function that does this. Um, and really, I feel like we, ne we need to look at each of the values in the list and we are going to invoke our folder function with the initial list. We'll get back a value that becomes the current list, uh, and we invoke it, invoke it with, the, with each individual value. Um, that was awesome. What was awesome? What happened? Oh, your drop. <laughs> Good job, uh, bad Dobby Fisher. Good drops. Um, we could create an instance of the generator, the generator of the values. Right, and then yield each value. So it's kind of like this. I look distressed because I am distressed. Like I really don't even know what's happening. So basically, our we have our initial list, and then we have let's call it like uh, current list. Because we could say, um, quick stretch. 
Yeah, I might do fold left. So I think I'm actually implementing fold left right here. That's what's happening because I'm not going to go because fold right has to go in reverse, right? We're going to do fold left. Um, so uh, we will say we call our our current list becomes the fold function with the value and the current list itself. Uh, then what do we yield? Yeah, I'm gonna do fold left. Wait, but fold left, wait. Fold left returns a single value? Well, what's confusing me about, oh no, that was zip, yeah, but what's confusing me about fold right is that uh, it's calling it list here. Yeah, so it is reduce, so we are summing them all. Um, but the thing about fold left is that it does not accept a list like fold right accepts a list. Well, let's see, what does the plus function do? Yeah, plus function takes in two values and adds them. That's easy. Easy. I mean, that's a, like, let's, it's a lot like this, but we have a, I mean, I guess we're already doing that, right? Yeah, it's like this, but, um, Result equals um, the initial value. So fold left takes the initial value and the fold function. Hey, NovaScript, thank you for the 75 bits. Doing some coding challenges. Nice, 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 nice. Will there be balloons and confetti when I reach 1,000 subs? Uh, we've, we have reached 1,000 subs like three different times. <laughs> It always goes down. So, like, the first time, I actually went on vacation immediately after, so the number went down. Um, 30 days before two days ago, we got gifted, like, 300 uh, subs in a single day, so the number went down again. <laughs> but um, we're really close. We're really close. Um, okay, yeah, so result is the initial value. And then um, result equals the fold function with the, um, I don't know. Yeah, with the current result and the current value. And then we return the result. This is why this confuses me, because this is not a generator. This is actually just returning a value itself, right? Wait, what? Seth drum, Drums dropped down to 100 subs? How is that even possible? Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, I, like, I, I did see the number like has gone down a little bit, but he's, he's got, gotten gifted quite a few subs. That's crazy. Uh, we have a keyboard command, exclamation mark keyboard. You'll get a link. Okay, but yeah, that means that this is not actually a generator. This is just... Fold just does this. We don't even do a new list. We just do this. Like that. Is it okay to use JS JavaScript for interviews? Um, if the job uses JavaScript, if, if that what you mean. <laughs> oh, it might have been a joke. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, I have the one with brown switches, I believe. Um, oh, I commented out the wrong test. Plus equals? No. It's a reduce. Oh, I didn't save my test. There we go. Okay, that's why this confused me because uh, zip, well maybe that's why, because fold right needs to return a list in generators because um, it's going from the right instead of from the left, but fold left is just a reduce. That was easy enough. This is literally our reduce function. We have our initial value. We invoke our reducer with the current value and the next value, and then assign that to the result, and then do it over and over again. 
Yeah, I don't like a numpad. <laughs> I like, uh, so this is a 60% keyboard. Um, the bl oh, the blue keys are see-through. I can change the colors. Whoa. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like 60%. The, num the numpad is just too much. I don't need a numpad. How can I live without a numpad? I literally have never in my life used a numpad. I don't really even know what a numpad is for. We have numbers at the top of the keyboard, right? Numbers are here. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't, I don't see this as a linked list. I don't know, but look at this. Wait. From list, fold, from list, oh, okay. Increment zero. Oh, I use a left-handed mouse. <laughs> I'm not left-handed, but I use a left-handed vertical mouse. Uh, it helps with uh, potential RSI in my right wrist. And then it'd be real, I don't do like, I guess they do make left-handed keyboards but I don't type numbers that much. I don't know. Uh, this is an E element keyboard. It's like a no name, right? It's like a $40 mechanical keyboard. Ink is not defined. Oh. Oh, we got rid of it. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I initially got it because I just wanted to see uh, what was a mechanical keyboard like? And I really like it. Um, I might get a new one soon. Oh, increment literally adds one. <laughs> but I somehow removed the increment function from here. We need it. Thanks, ESLint. Well, <clears throat> I think I removed the function. Yeah, I put it in line somewhere. I don't even, I don't remember where I put it, but <laughs> I put it in line. <laughs> yeah, so there's no keypad, uh, and then the arrow keys are closer, but also, um, or so there's no numpad. And then also things like the home, end, page up, and down, those are on the right-hand side, instead of being like off to the side with the arrow keys. Um, if you look at my gear page, I have a, another cheap mechanical keyboard. Um, and that one is not a 60% keyboard. And I use that one in my office, uh, this one. And so this is um, what a keyboard looks like that's not 60%. That's not um, so you can see that the, the, the keypad and the function keys and such on the right-hand side. Whereas on the 60% keyboard, um, it's all, but oh no, I did the wrong thing. The 60% keyboard, it's all bunched up on the right-hand side, which is nice. It has an 80%, is it 80%? This is like a normal keyboard, right? I don't consider, I couldn't, I don't consider a key, a keyboard with a, a numpad, a normal keyboard. Um, but yeah, this is the 60%. It's all kind of like smushed together. You got your function keys and such on the right hand side. Your arrow keys are kind of like embedded. Um, instead of nice and big like that. Oh yeah. The context switching is next level. <laughs> But yeah, we gotta get back to code. Also, uh, let's take—I mean, let's let's take a quick pause and appreciate all the new follows and everything, because uh, we've been coding for a while. Um, Dustin Twitch, thank you for being here. Uh, Shazam, thank you for the follow. Kitten Mittens, appreciate you. Quibble TV, thank you for the follow. Samek, thank you for the follow. No Good Nick, thank you for the follow. Uh, Exploiter Neo, thank you for the follow. Uh, Granddad, thank you very much. Yanni, thanks for following. Uh, Acidic, thank you. Ralphie Codes, thank you for being here. Dowsy, much appreciated. Uh, Ally Coding, thank you very much. Uh, Christiana Rafa, much appreciated. Uh, Patty, thank you for the follow. Uh, Prelusion, thank you for following. Cushion Codes, much appreciated. Coding with CDJE, thank you for the follow. Uh, Ashen, thanks for following. Uh, Perini, much appreciated. Darth Maul, welcome. And uh, Chris Ellis Dev, thank you for being here. Hello, whiskey. <laughs> whiskey, sir. Thanks for being here. Um, all right. What happened? Gaming boat with the posture check 33 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, thank you for that stretch, T13R. And uh, Leo Met, thank you for the hydrate. J. 
Cheers. Tito. Thank you for the sub. <laughs> Much appreciated. Exposed keyboards? Never heard of it. Yeah, the Red Dragon is nice. For someone that used to work in retail, the numpad. Yeah, I can see it. I don't, I just, I don't use it for programming ever. I don't, I just don't type numbers that much. I really like, uh, you know, like the, the full bigger size laptops that include a numpad. To me, it's just like ridiculous. It's like a waste of space. I don't know. It's my opinion. Keypad is required for Alka too. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, this is a, a frameless, uh, transparent, borderless electron window. That's what this thing is. <clears throat> and thanks for the follow, Tito. The, the, the follow and the sub. Very much appreciated. Um, test fail. <laughs> nice, Shaggy. Yeah, yeah. If you look at the Airbnb style guide, that tells you why to do I++ versus I++ equals 1. Uh, let's look at Expos. Never heard of it. Oh, it looks like little hands. <laughs> um, interesting. Let's look at it. How much does it cost? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. You know, it's a little, it's a more, little more natural. It looks like the keyboard melted in the heat. <laughs> All right, buy now. How much you cost? The night mode, 200. That's like, that's not bad. You can get the, the accessible ergonomic one for 119. It's actually really decent. Huh. Well, I have not seen the back. Let's talk about keyboards. <laughs> um, <clears throat> a one-handed compact input device. This, is this what you're talking about, Greg? Uh, I don't have sample code, but I will recommend if you're using um, the Vue CLI, there is a Vue Electron plugin, and that's what I used for this overlay. So I generated a Vue app, and then I did Vue Add Electron, or Vue Add Electron Builder, I think is the one I used. And it automatically sets everything up for Vue and Electron for you. Oh, well, thank you, Tito. <laughs> Learn to code. Very cool. I appreciate you. <clears throat> Just put it in the microwave. <laughs> the Ergodox Moonlander. Let's look at it. <clears throat> uh, is the Ergodox what the, the Primogen uses? Interesting. I have a 15. I mean, yeah, this one's $40. It's not, it's not that expensive. <laughs> They had you put your hands into and typed hanging. What am I? Oh. Oh. So um, there was like this viral video that showed a blind person using uh, the accessibility features on an iPhone, but they actually showed that they have a Braille keyboard that you can enable on the iPhone. And, like you hold the iPhone like this and then you, you do this. Um, is that similar? Because there's basically just like different sequences for different letters. One-handed compact input device that replicates all the functions of a full-size keyboard, but with greater efficiency and convenience. I don't know how convenient it is to memorize all these different inputs. <laughs> um, you would, I mean, but I could see it. This actually... This could potentially be, like, really cyber... I mean, here's the thing. We, we already memorize, for the most part, those of us that type a lot... We memorize the keyboard layout. So this is just learning another keyboard layout. It seems like it'd be harder though. I like it though because you could have something like a, like a Google Glass or some sort of augmented reality device, and you need some way of input. The one thing that I do not like, or like I, I think is a problem that sort of needs to be solved, is um, for all of these. If we want to live in a future with like super smart devices and augmented reality and stuff like that, um, voice control is not that great because you'd have to be like speaking in public and it has interference and stuff like that. So if you have an input device like this, it could be extremely efficient, and you can tell it what to do just by doing this. You can put it here, you can put it in your pocket. I don't know. If I send you my stack overflow post, over post, you try to help me. You can post it in the Discord. Uh, I can help you or somebody else can. Yep, 
I've seen people building uh, keyboards too. Two hundred dollars to get two buttons. We could, I mean, you could probably build your own. <laughs> I've not seen the keyboard pants. Uh, seven buttons. <laughs> I was using RTX Voice this morning. Yeah, RTX Voice is pretty cool. A neural link. A keyboard that randomly changes layout every hour. Keeps you on your toes. Cool. Well, that was a fun detour into the land of keyboards. Thank you all for participating. Um, let's write some more code. Now, we just got the uh, fold left function working. So that's great. Um, I think. Are our test passing? Great. Um, now we have scan right, scan left. Oh yeah, Doc mentioned something about um, a memoized list. So about the memoized generator, it takes in a generator and produces another one dot entries, but it internally memoizes the entries produced so far in an array. So multiple iterations of the same elements will only call the original generator once. Well, that's interesting. And so what you're saying is this is useful for fold write because we can memoize the call to the entries function and then just reverse it because we have the memoized values. Is that what you mean, Doc? Memoize. <laughs> yeah, I mean, direct connection is another thing, but like while, while it sounds cool, the tricky part is it's going to have to be developed by a corporation, and then they're going to use ads to fund it. And then you have ads injected directly into your brain, and that's not fun. Um, so, yeah. So, Doc says, you use it to fix the side effects issue and make everything faster. Replace sys.entries with a new memoized generator. Applies to filter, map, or anything that calls functions or does expensive, expensive computation. I can see it. That's actually really easy too, right? We just, we store this dot entries in an array and then we yield those values. Memoize. Keyboard list communication with Tacoma, yeah. No, 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 ads. Advertisements injected into your brain. Come on, come on, Peek. <laughs> yeah, careful, careful. Um, then implement that thing. Yeah, yeah, no worries, Peek. Okay. Um, what am I doing? I'm tired as well. We've been coding for, I guess I've been coding for an hour now. We've gotten a few tests done. It's, it's hard to say how many we have gotten done because they're all embedded in the same tests. Let's see, we've gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we did nine tests. That's pretty good for an hour. What's 60 minutes divided by nine? That's 6.6 .6 minutes per, per test. <laughs> Thank you, T13, for the hydrate. Cheers. All right, I'm going to take a five-minute break. Should I use JWT or Session, and what's the difference? Uh, there, there's um, JSON Web Tokens are stateless. They're the You basically, uh, I mean, you, you can use them in a non-stateful way, but the original idea was that there's a... A, a secret on the server as long as a token was generated with that uh, that secret you can trust the, da the, the data inside of it best cup ever well thank you <laughs> so you, uh, JSON web tokens are meant to be stateless you can trust the data inside of them um, so there's that sessions you need some sort of persistent storage for those sessions and I mean the nice thing about JSON web tokens is that they can easily scale across multiple servers, because all you have to do is have the same uh, shared secret on all the servers, and they all can validate and use that token. Whereas with sessions, all of the servers would need to look up in a database to find that session, which is potentially slower, but I don't know. Oh, no, it's not chili peppers. It's a chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. Can anyone spell chrysanthemum? First person to spell chrysanthemum correctly that is not a sub will be gifted a sub. Who's gonna be first? Did I say that right? Chrysanthemum? Chrysanthemum. That's right, but you're not a, you're already a sub, Shaggy. <laughs> we need a non-sub. Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum? 
<laughs> Chrysanthemum? Chrysanthemum? Here we got Leet Linux Hacksaw. Did we spell it right? Are you even following the channel Leet Linux Hacksaw? <laughs> um, nice. They've spelled it correctly. I will gift you a sub, but I feel like I've never seen you before. <laughs> Uh, so typically, uh, with JSON web tokens, you just let the tokens expire. Um, you can, and that, that is the way of logging out, is you delete them on the client and then they'll expire after a certain amount of time. Um, okay, you're brand new here. That's fine. You get a sub. <laughs> Welcome to the coding garden. Um... But yeah, but typically with JSON web tokens, you just the token expires. Um, you can implement uh, revoke tokens, but then that requires that you store the tokens in a database. Um, oh, and thank you for the follow. <laughs> that's just that's how we get new followers around here is we just gift them subs. Um, but um, you can implement revoking tokens. But the issue is that with that is now your tokens are potentially no longer uh, stateless because whenever you're validating a token, you also, you also have to look up in your database to see if that token has been revoked. Um, yeah. I usually don't like talking about this mainly because uh, there are so many intricacies and I really, I just want to point you to like a better resources. Hey. Congrats, delete Linux Hexor. They can spell chrysanthemum. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, yeah, and that, that's the other cool thing about uh, JSON web tokens is you can store, uh, like for one, you could store like a, a username um, or you could store an avatar URL if you really wanted to. You could store things like roles and then you could use that list of roles on your front end to decide what views to show them. You would still, of course, want to validate those roles in your back end request, um, but it's a nice way of holding all of that information. You have a remote managed JSON web token as well, which requests the first lookup, essentially the same as a session ID lookup, and reject them on the fly. Yeah, but the tricky part is you've got to, um, you gotta reject them. Oh, well, welcome, uh, Perluzion. <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> Chris and his, <laughs> Chris and his mom. <laughs> What's up, that guy? <laughs> Chris Antonum? Chris Anthermum? What's up, SP? Chris Hadamer, wait, what? <laughs> I missed all of those chats. What's funny is there are only two people that spelled chrysanthemum right. Shaggy and Leet Linux Hacksor. Hacksor. Jeez. <laughs> you can also shard or partition JSON web tokens into groups of n different keys, which give individual, which you can individually uh, individually revoke. Yeah, and, and the other thing is like uh, you you could if you want to invalidate everyone's token is you just put a new secret on the server. But yeah. Nice, good to hear. All right, we got a few follows. I'll acknowledge these, and then I'm gonna take a five minute break. Eric, thanks for following. Elite Linux Hacksaw, welcome to the coding garden. You can use all of our cool emotes. You're Elite Linux Hacksaw. Hacksaw, you might you might like the code emote. Code. Uh, you might also like uh, this code emote. Code. Uh, if you write tests, I don't know. Do Elite do Elite Hacksaws write tests? I guess they should if they're Elite, right? No. I'm not gonna force tests on hackers. <laughs> don't don't write tests. Um, what else do we got? That's nice. I don't know how you feel about, about JavaScript or CSS, but we do have flowers. <laughs> you can use those flowers, too. What else? Um, this is nice. You can tell people hello. And if you like dogs, this is my dog. You can share my dog around. It's actually, I, I've, I've been watching other people's streams, and it's really cool to see my dog in other people's streams. <laughs> Dubby! Thank you very much for upgrading your sub. Very much appreciated. Oh yeah, there's also first try. That people like this one too. Um, I'm a big fan of the Futura font. Um, and there's wow, which I found out is how you spell wow in French. <laughs> I actually didn't know that before. Um, and we do have cans of beans. It's an ins it's an inside joke here, but I don't know. I guess that's it. You can also share the coding garden. <laughs> and welcome, Dubby. Thank you for that uh, that upgrade. Uh, but yeah, thanks for following. And then uh, Creative CJ, thank you for the follow, and Noodles, thank you for following as well. Oh yeah, well we got the Better Twitch. So I've gone crazy with Better Twitch TV emotes. Uh, I got Better Twitch TV Pro, so now we have 50 shared emotes, and I'm in the process of uploading custom emotes, like the uh, tech emotes, like Angular, 
and the Linux Penguin and stuff like that. We have so many emotes. I don't know why more channels don't take advantage of all these emotes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's the noise that cats make outside my window. Or making outside my window right now. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, a quick tip. If you see this stuff in the chat, like poggers, and you're like, why is everybody typing poggers? It's because they're using better Twitch TV or uh, Frinker Faces. So I actually have the uh, Frinker Faces extension installed. Um, that's why my emote picker looks like this. And then whenever, because it's running on the chat, when you do poggers, you see that emote. And then my overlay has been written to uh, parse those emotes as well. And you can learn more about that on the Frequently Asked Questions page. <laughs> so if you go here, yeah, look at those poggers, poggers. Uh, there's a section that says, uh, what are CJ clap poggers, pog you, omega lol, and all these different things. And uh, basically you can either install BTTV or Franker Faces. Oh yeah, we got Pico, wow. That's pretty cool, that's like a little checkerboard. <laughs> Estas bien guapo, oh thank you, Elko. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm gonna take a five minute break. Uh, you can, you, not in the official Twitch app, but I have found an Android, a third party Android app for looking at Twitch chat and it supports Franker Faces and better Twitch TV. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. What's up, Zav? <laughs> uh, and thank you to Exmo Linux for the follow and Xamon. All right, five minute break. Uh, while I'm gone, be nice to each other. Uh, I'm gonna put on some music you can hang out, and when we come back, I will continue to be more confused by these generator functions. <laughs> All right, see you soon.
Um, if you give me a moment, I'm actually going to enable RTX voice. Test. Test, test, test. Test, 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 test. Cool. Uh, let me know if that sounds okay. And hello, everyone. Welcome back. Audio good. Cool. Yeah, we have weird, weird artifacts every now and then. Um, I'm going to look into some better audio filters. The main thing is my, my partner is doing things like getting ready for bed and stuff like that. And um, my you can hear everything in my house. But with RTX voice, it filters out um, uh, like everything. So she can do whatever she wants. <laughs> um, but hey, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, all mods have all in infinite permissions to upload whatever emotes you want now use that um use that power wisely and don't get my account banned um but yeah you can make that a bttv emote yeah well welcome smiley welcome welcome muted what are you talking about it will not peak so if, if that happens uh you won't be able to hear it like can you hear that it's probably like really muffled but i'm about to open up this dark chocolate Cashew butter. What? <laughs> so, Handy, the first rule of, of being a moderator is you're not asked to be a moderator. I recommend you read the fact because there is literally that's on there. Can I be a mod? Snack <laughs> tree. What's up, Jarrell? <laughs> um, I thought that I could have swore maybe I. I think they make peanut butter versions too. I think they do, but this is just happens to be cashew. Bruh. <laughs> well, welcome, Zaman. Thank you for being here. Oh, what's up, Noodles? Uh, you can ask a question. As long as it doesn't derail me too much. Uh, Christiana says, is there a way I can export all functions in a file then, and then just require that file to another file and access them without prefixes? Uh, you can use destructuring. So typically the way uh, you do it in Node.js is you export an object that has multiple things on it. And then in the other file, you, uh, you could destructure, um, the things from that exported object. So that way you don't have to prefix it or have a namespace larger. I've tried flutter. What's the timeout right now? Custom slow mode? What? Followers only disabled slow mode 15 seconds. Cool. Um, does it have a name in programming? It's, it's literally called destructuring. I'll show you on MDN. Uh, destructuring. Destructuring assignment. I mean, you technically don't even have to use destructuring. You could just create several variables that are all equal to the properties of an object. Um, but this makes it really nice. This is array destructuring. I want to see object destructuring. I mean, this... I don't know why all of the examples are with arrays. It's messed up. It's messed up, yo. Okay, first of all, you can read if, if you read this, you you will learn. But let's let's make a YouTube video about destructuring because that that will be fun. Hey, classic game lab, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> One week slow mode. Yeah, you basically would have to import them one by one. If you're using uh, re require. If you're using uh, ES2015 modules, imports and exports, then um, you technically d could do ex like import star, but then it's still going to be namespaced. I don't know. Let's make a YouTube video. Who's ready for some content? Um, uh, 
Destructuring. Hey, Laxman. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> um. Yeah, good enough. Content. <laughs> Yeah, you are. Like, um, hopefully it'll be useful. Um, we'll talk about it. All right. What do we do? I think we just start. Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. This is going to be uh, a quick intro to destructuring, and then we'll also talk about uh, where destructuring might be useful, uh, especially in the scenario of, like, you're in Node.js, you have a module that exports multiple things and you want to import multiple things into another file. But we'll get there. Let's just first start with like, um, what is uh, basic destructuring? So let's say I have myself an object called person. And in that person, I have a name, which is CJ, just like that, because that's me. So this object represents me. <laughs> um, and let's say I want a variable that has the name of that person inside of it. So I, I could do this. I could say name equals person dot name. Um, my linter is yelling at me because it it says prefer destructuring. But let's uh, let's see what happens here. So I'm going to use Quaka, which is a tool that will run my code inside the editor. But you can see we've done it, right? We've extracted that name property into a variable called name. And that's great. This is like the old way of doing it. Um, and destructuring is syntactic sugar that makes it a little bit nicer to do something like this. And wh where it um, is really nice is when you have multiple properties. So you could have something like, let's say I have a dog and that dog has a name, which is Panzer. Um, and let's say I have a snack and that snack is a cashew uh, butter cup. And I have a drink and that drink is water. Um, so now our object has a bunch of properties and let's say I wanted more variables. I could say something like uh, snack Equals person dot snack. Did I spell drink wrong? No, I didn't <laughs> uh, And then we can log the snack. Oh Good job. Good job. NovaScript <laughs> um, Not the snake the snack and that should be cashew buttercup great uh, and we could do this all day, right? We could create variables that access individual properties. Uh, now, where destructuring is useful is instead of having to access each individual property and then put it into a variable, you can do it all in one go. So uh, this is the old way. And then in ES2015, destructuring was introduced. So um, what you do is you put uh, an object on the left-hand side, or you put curly braces on the left-hand side of the equal sign. It's a little weird, but we'll do this. We'll say const curly braces equals person. All right. This currently is invalid syntax. Uh, and now what I do is inside of these curly braces, I specify all of the properties that I want to pull out and put into a variable. So I can just do name and snack. Done. So basically what I've done here is, so right-hand side is an object or something with properties on it. The left-hand side is curly, brace, curly braces, and I specify the name of each of the properties that are inside of the object that I want to put into um, variables and now we have variables name and snack which is great and so this is basic destructuring instead of having to individually uh access a property put it in a variable we can kind of do it all in one go just like this um and you can do a lot more interesting things so you can do things like a default assignment so i can say like if name is not specified then name should be cj um and so actually let's let's show you i'll show you what happens if there was that property was not on there so right now we're destructuring name and snack uh from that oh you're right let it be known, this is object destructuring. I'll show array destructuring really quick, but let's say I don't have a name property. Now when I destructured it, it's undefined, but I can combine that with um, default uh, values and say, if there is no name in there, then set name to be that. And now I get CJ. So it, this is really useful if you're like dealing with results from an API and, and potentially a value is, doesn't exist in the response. You can do things like default uh, assignment. Um, you can also rename the variables. So if we put uh, name back in there, now we're making it, uh, we're extracting name, right? Um, and let's say I actually want to rename this variable. So inside of the object, it's called name. So I do have to say name here, but let's say I want to put it in a variable called my name. I can just do name colon my name. And now that creates a variable called my name. And you can see the error I get is name is not, not defined because I no longer have a variable called name. I can now use the variable my name like that. Um, 
So there's renaming, there's default assignment. The other thing is like nested destructuring. So let's go deeper. Uh, how do you change the name and the default? Oh, I've never, oh, they are like, is that a trick question? I think, can you do this? My name equals what? Hey, that's some weird syntax. <laughs> but basically this says, there is a property in the object called name, extract it into a variable called my name, and if it does not have a value, assign it to the, the, the value what? Good call, Alka. <laughs> Inception destructuring. <laughs> But we're just going to go back to this. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to show you next is like nested destructuring. So you'll notice that there also is a dog with the name Panzer. Now, of course, uh, I could extract out dog, right? Yeah, and this is what we're going to show you right now. How do you get that dog name? So dog, and that gives me the the object itself. And it, it, it is, it's a reference to that same object. I can get that. Now, let's say I want the dog name. We can go deeper. So if the property you're destructuring is an object, you do curly braces, and then you can specify the properties you want to extract from that uh, nested object. So let's say I do want to extract the name. Now, if I do this, we now technically have an error because we're trying to define two different variables with the name name. So this, in this scenario, I absolutely have to rename one of them. I could call this one uh, my name. And you see that name um, becomes uh, Panzer. Um, or I could say name is dog name. And then you'll notice that we no longer are destructuring dog. I think like, can I do this? Like extract dog, crazy. <laughs> I've never actually done this. I don't know uh, why you would do it, but um, check it. So if I want to extract the object into a variable called dog, I'll specify it. And then if I want to extract properties inside of that object, um, I, can do, I can specify it uh, below that. I literally know, did not know that you could do this. That's pretty cool, because, but as you can see down here, is we have a variable called uh, dog. Um, so I've never done that either, but I do know when I should have done that. I <laughs> didn't know I could. So we have a variable called dog, which is the object, and then we have a variable called dog name, which is just the dog name itself. And this, this can go infinitely deep. So you can destructure nested nested properties. You can have default names inside nested nested properties. Um, you can have uh, default or uh, default, ass yeah, default assignment. You can rename them. Um, it goes all the way down. What if you change it? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, oh okay, so uh, that gets into the idea of reference values versus primitive values. So these values, name and snack, are primitives. So if I change them, so right now, if I log person, you should see that it, it has the name CJ and all that. If I change the variable name, actually I can't because it's a const variable, but let's say we made these let. <laughs> let's make these changeable variables. So if I said name equals wat, if we log the name, now, we're going to get wet, right? But if I log the person, what will it be and why? First non-sub in the chat to tell me will get gifted a sub. So if I, if I log the person right now, what, is, what will the value of name be on the person and why? It will be CJ, but why? Oh, that's true, Andrew. We can even talk about that because you can do a default assignment of an object with the default values inside of it. Because if you're changing the var, not the struct itself. Yeah, or not the object itself. It's not a reference. Yeah, yeah. I'll give to you a sub, Christinas. <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah. So, like, because I destructured name, it's a primitive value. It's just a, it's, it's a copy of the string. But uh, if we look at the original person they still have the name CJ. And, and that, that, this just has to do with like uh, primitive versus reference types. Uh, not really anything to do with destructuring. But yeah, good call. Yeah, it was a copy, copy of the value. Um, okay, and then the, the other thing I'll show you is like what um, uh, Andrew talked about is we could do a default assignment of the dog. So let's say we didn't have a dog property. Now you see that we get an error here because I'm, I'm trying to destructure dog, but... Um, dog is not defined on the original object. Uh, but what I can do is I can say uh, dog has a default value of like name um, panzer uh, like that. Cool. Um, oh, no, no, no. Wait. Can I do that? No, it, it, this gets weird because now I'm, I, I, I want to do this basically. <laughs> I could do this. I could say dog uh, equals an object where the name is uh, Panzer. 
like this. So I am now, if dog is not defined on the original object, set it to be this object with this property name. Um, I'd never done that before, so I, would, I don't know how you would do a default assignment and destructure the dog itself. Things get weird, but yeah, this is a default assignment of an object. Cool. Um, let's put that dog back. All right, so that's destructuring. Um, yeah, because it's a value type, exactly. Do 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 do. <laughs> Yeah, Alka's going way deep, way deep. <laughs> this is a mess. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what's known as syntactic sugar, right? Because you can write your code this way, but it's a little bit nicer to do this. Save some lines of code. I don't know. Okay, so this is object destructuring. The other thing I'll show you really quick is array destructuring. So if I have an array of uh, values, and that just has one, two, and three, um, I can do this. I can say uh, first equals values. And uh, what we'll first have inside of it? Anyone want to take a guess? Anybody? Anybody? There are two flies. Oh, look at him. He landed on my finger. I don't know if you can see him. <laughs> I literally just put my hand out and he landed on my finger. Okay, go over there. Go over there. <laughs> one, one, exactly. Ah! <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, it is It is just uh, the value 1. So the way array destructuring works is it's very similar, but instead of curly braces, you use square brackets. Um, and we have uh, square brackets, and we're saying the first value in the array should be assigned to this variable called first. You can also have um, second and third, and of course these are all going to have 1, 2, and 3. And just like object destructuring, I mean, technically you, you could rename them. You could say this is like wat, who, and fly, and now we have these three variables, wat, who, and fly, which are equal to the, the first three values in the array. Um, yeah. Uh, this extension is called quaka.js. Cool, so you can do array destructuring. Uh, one thing you might also do is, let's say I want a variable that has the third value in the array inside of it, but I don't want the first two, you can just leave those blank. So if you do uh, comma, comma, fly, uh, that skips the first two and then puts the third value inside of the variable called fly. And so this is useful if uh, you have an array with multiple things and you know that you only want to extract um, certain ones at certain indices. It is similar to multiple assignment, yeah, because basically you're taking the values from an array and putting them into multiple variables. <laughs> you're, you're extracting the, the prototype with the default constructor? Hey, hey, what about squashing? So uh, this is, yeah, the, the rest or the spread operator. Um, we wouldn't really use that here. Yeah, yeah, so it has the, that's not useful here, but you, JavaScript does have it. Useful, but weird looking, yeah. So here's the other thing. So this, this okay, so check it. So that, that's one way to do it, um, but I'll show you another way, which I kind of prefer, but here's the thing. In JavaScript, everything is an object, right? So if everything is an object, then how could I use object destructuring to get the value three and put it into a variable called fly? The first non-sub to tell me will get gifted a sub. So instead of array destructuring, I want to use object destructuring to take this value and put it into a variable called fly. Oh, I know this. To fly, yeah, you got a strider. So um, the an, an array is just kind of like an object that has keys. The key is two, and then I want to rename it to fly. Look at that. We've used object destructuring on an array. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So the, the in the, the it's because the keys in this array are actually the indices, right? Because you could say zero is wat, and one is who. And now we've taken the indices in the array and put them into those variables. Weird, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I actually would prefer this because then you don't have the weird, like, empty floating commas. That's it. All right, everyone. I think that's all there is to say about destructuring. Um, one thing I'll show you real quick as, like, a practical example of this is let's say we have a file called um, MathUtils. And inside of this, I have a function called add that takes in A and B. And that won't pass my code review. <laughs> This just returns a plus b, uh, and then let's say I have another function called uh, multiply. Uh, 
and then I can return a plus b. Um, and I want to make these two functions available to the outside world. So I'm in Node.js, uh, and I'm going to use a common JS, which is um, use module.exports in require. And thank you, Bjolni, for the Twitch Prime sub. Um, so I'm going to export an object that has an add property and a multiply property on it. Um, and so this module exports an object. I can import that object into another file and then use those functions. Um, so let's do that here. Um, I actually think Quack is going to break if I do this, but I could put it into an object called math utils like that. Yeah. So only the pro edition allows us to import files. So that's fine. <laughs> but did I do multiply with a plus sign? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It should be a multiplication sign. But regardless, I have functions here. I've exported them as an object, and now I want to use those uh, elsewhere. Now, of course, I could just import the entire object. Um, and then, uh, and let me let me kill Quaka really quick. So I could do MatthewTills.add or MatthewTills.multiply. Uh, one and two. Or multiply. Exactly. Right. But... Now that you know how destructuring works, we basically can put these into a non-namespaced function. So I can just say uh, add and multiply. And now I directly have access to those functions and I don't need to uh, namespace them on uh, math utils. So that's like a practical example. Um, I mentioned we're in CommonJS. You could do a very similar thing in uh, ES 2015. It's a little bit different because you basically export each individual function and then you would import um, them, but it uses a similar syntax in that you're destructuring those exported uh, named exports. The multiply function is wrong. I think we fixed it. What's up, Bob? <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Uh, anything else I should talk about in terms of um, array destructuring, object destructuring? This was fun. We talked a lot about, about a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think I, I did see a message, though, like, why not values at two? You're right. I mean, that, that, that's probably even simpler than either of these two things, is we could say um, cons fly uh, equals values at two. And in this scenario, it's probably more useful to do that. But uh, <laughs> basically, you could use destructuring, or you could just assign them to variables. All right, I don't see any other suggestions, so I think... Yeah, but if you do it with like this, you're not flexing your destructuring knowledge. <laughs> Can you destructure the file contents without passing every argument? It, it, you can't. That's the, that's the tricky part. And I, and I see what you're saying is like, let's say you have a hundred functions and you want to import all of them in the in the namespace itself. You, you can't do that. You have to actually name each individual one. Um, yeah, the spread operator with destructuring. That's too advanced. I think we're gonna end it there. This video is already like ten minutes long. <laughs> Um, but yeah, unfortunately in JavaScript, you cannot do that. So you would have to literally write out every single one or you would put them behind a namespace. Yeah. There's no wildcard destructuring now, unfortunately, because that would be similar to like import star in some of some more, some of the more like uh, compiled languages, but we don't really have that in, in JavaScript. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. You can destructure with function parameters, right? So right now I'm just showing destructuring at the top level, but if you had a function, um, called like say hello that takes in a person and then this just logs no, not say hell say hello say hello <laughs> this logs a uh, person dot name hello person dot name um, of course we could write this with destructuring so if we instead of writing it this way we could say um, the argument to this function or the parameter to this function is an object so let's destructure it and grab the name property and then we can just do this uh, this is extremely common in uh, in react where you have uh, components that accept props and you can destructure those props so yeah you can destructure anywhere uh, right now it's complaining because name is uh, uh, defined above but yeah <laughs> I think that's about it thanks everyone for watching everyone say bye YouTube bye YouTube Content. <laughs> Bye. Cool. All right. We need to give sub to uh, Christina's great work. And hopefully that helped. Like, I realize the <laughs> the answer to your question is no. <laughs> you you can't do, uh, like, wildcard imports. And basically, you can do what Doc is saying if you're using uh, ES 2015. Basically, you can say um, uh, import star, and then that puts it into a namespace. But well, that's similar to just import math utils from math utils. Because uh, you would still have to say all the math dot add or all the math dot uh, whatever else. 
the master of destruction. <laughs> um, yeah. Bye. This dot props dot my var. Yeah, and then you would you would destructure that. And who was the other person? Strider. Strider A. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Why is everyone saying bye? Oh, they're saying bye to YouTube. <laughs> they're not saying bye to me. <laughs> The, basically, the the informal discussion of oh, and congrats to Christina's fam. Um, the informal dis discussion of destructuring that just happened is going to be a YouTube video, and it's going to get at least ten views. At least ten people are going to see your name on YouTube. Um, I don't use JavaScript, but at least I learned something weird tonight. Nice. <laughs> and congrats to Strider. Thank you, Strider, uh, for being here. Quaka, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you about this Quaka thing. <laughs> uh, I need, I probably need to put that in my frequently asked questions, but it's uh, Quaka JS. Um, they have plugins for different editors too. Um... Hey, <laughs> thank you for <laughs> Strider. I appreciate you. Thank you. I gifted you a sub. You gifted somebody else a sub. Much appreciated. Um. All right, uh, but. Uh, yeah, they have plugins for uh, like WebStorm and Atom and Sublime, but this is the thing that was showing the output of console log like right on the on the same line. Um, and I, I am using the free version, but Chris Fam <laughs> with some subs. <laughs> oh no, Christina's. <laughs> you all are too kind. I was trying to be nice. You all answered the question, so I gifted to you, and then you gifted back. <laughs> well, it's great. Um, regardless, because now we have more coding garden, coding garden fam. You can use all the emotes, like this one, like the coding heart. <laughs> um, my YouTube handle, uh, yeah, there it is, uh, Coding Garden with CJ. Yep. Um, okay. Did I share the link? I need to add this in my uh, frequently asked questions. It's not there, but I will add it. I missed your question. I'll look at it. Thanks, Streamlabs. <laughs> um. Cool. Yeah, I probably just need to buy the pro version because as uh, what I was going to mention is, as you saw, whenever I tried to require in my own file, it broke. I was like, hey, you need the pro version for this. Um, OK. I don't think I don't think VS Code has anything built in, um, but that plugin I'm using um, does it. Yeah. Is there anybody else besides CJ? No, <laughs> it's just me. I mean, I thought of like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not thinking of doing this right now, but if I ever wanted to take a break from Coding Garden, um, it could be Coding Garden with someone else. How do you destructure the last value of the array when you don't know the length of the array? It's not possible. <laughs> um, you could use uh, pop, but then that would modify the array. Yeah, you, you can't, there, there's not a way to do that that I know of. Um, oh, actually, <laughs> no, no, I got it. I got, watch, 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 watch. Um, I'm smart. Okay, so <laughs> let's say we have uh, values equals um, one, two, three, four, five. Really long array. There could be a bunch of stuff in here. Watch me. Uh, I could say um, we could combine computed property names uh with it so so we'll say values and then i want to get the last value we can say it is this we'll say values dot length minus one like that so this is a computed property so uh whatever this resolves to will be a property on the object itself um and then that should give me the last value um oh yeah well Get rid of that. Let's see, does it work? It works. 
claim works. So this is how you would do it. But arguably, just like somebody else said in the chat, like it's probably a lot more clear to actually say values at values.length. Minus one. I mean, arguably, you would do that instead. Like that. But look at me, I'm smart. I know how to JavaScript. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Raphael. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah, oh yeah, you could use slice. So slice uh, creates a copy of the array. Oh, wait. Yeah, slice will create a copy of the array, and then you just get the first value in the copy of the array. I'm smart. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, so you have length, length minus one. Yeah. Coding garden without CJ is just three hours of a green chair with crickets. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I don't believe you can, I don't believe you can do, like, the rest operator. Maybe you can. Can you? Let's see. Oh. Maybe you could do something like this, like, um, beginnings. How do you spell beginnings? Them, others, and then last. Const is not defined. Wait, what? <laughs> is this, is this not valid syntax? Um... Comma is not permitted after. Oh, so the linter error says uh, after the rest element. Yeah, so the the rest element always needs to be the last thing. Um, and then this technically just becomes another array with all like this is pointless. This just becomes another array with all the values. So you can do you could do something like this. You could have the first, and then the rest. Um, but you couldn't do the first and then the last. Yeah. You can in TypeScript? Not that I mean, not that I know of. TypeScript is mostly JavaScript. Can you do that in TypeScript? I've never done that. It's possible. It's very possible. Beginnings. <laughs> Should be permitted? Yeah. I mean, they probably have a reason for it. Like, the, the JavaScript engine parser probably thinks it has to do weird things. Um, if it sees the dot, 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 and then it sees that. I don't know. Okay, um, there's an al alarm going off upstairs. You probably can't hear it because of our next place. <laughs> but I'll be back in two minutes. Be nice to each other. I gotta go turn that alarm off. That alarm was actually in my pocket and it's been going off for 30 minutes. <laughs> Has anyone heard it? It could be that RTX voice uh, was silencing it, but there, there literally was an alarm going off in my pocket for, it, it said 30 minutes. Did anybody hear it? <laughs> check, check, check. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's get back to this code kata. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Um, so for those of you that are that are just joining us, um, what we've actually been doing here is uh, this particular code kata, which is um, basically we're implementing a list to data structure, um, and it's an infinite list. And I'm kind of tired, so we might not even finish it tonight. I think we're gonna let's get like five more tests done. I'm gonna call it there, and then we'll we'll come back to this next Wednesday. Yeah, the alarm is following me around. Like I got upstairs and I was like, I still hear it. Where is it? It's in my pocket. <laughs> it's in my pocket. Good morning, Krampus. Welcome to the show. All right. So um, I'll show you what we've implemented so far. Uh, yeah, we can close this. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. What's up, Classic Game? I missed your message earlier. Um, I'm following you for two weeks now, and you're the best. I'm a PHP web dev for seven years, and I'm trying to get into Node, and your videos and live streams are very helpful. It seems like you know much more than me at basically everything. <laughs> How can I become CJ? Just a lot of practice. Uh, I built a lot of apps. I have a lot of experience. That's about it. What about the drop game? What do you mean, what about the drop game? Oh, and somehow, how long has that been that way? The the, the LEDs are borked. <laughs> how long has it been like that? Did it just happen? Okay, let's acknowledge these followers. <laughs> oh. Now the fly, I think the fly is just exhausted because he's been in my basement for so long and he hasn't had any sustenance. Um, cause he's kind of given up. He is literally just sitting on my desk right here. <laughs> but Turk, thank you for the follow. Uh, Kirkwave, thank you for following. Uh, Jack Colavera, thank you. Uh, Siphunk, thanks for being here. Spotank, thanks for being here. Prodrug, Prodriguez, thank you. Fatty, much appreciated. Uh, Lays, thank you for being here. Thank you, New Nicknack. And Kevin, thank you for the follow. And Strider, thank you for following. Uh, and 2DFSSD, thank you for the follow. And NRVSREC, thank you for following. And Adril, or Adril, thank you for the follow. And Chronix, and Modestus, and Umbersage, and Johan Guzmandev, thank you for being here. Um, wow, cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the fly is, I mean, there, there are actually a lot, a lot of flies in my yard, and so pretty much every time I open the door, one of them gets in the house. But it's okay, they're not that annoying. I mean, sometimes they freak out, and they're, like, buzzing, and they, like, just want to get out, and that's a little annoying because they make so much noise, but other than that, they just hang out, so it's fine. Uh, and Dev Trillo, thank you for the hydrate. That's a cool Twitch name. <laughs> and FG Codex, thank you for the posture check. There's a pug right in front of me, <laughs> but I don't see it. Oh, I see this pug. Uh, and Kilowatt, thank you for the hydrate. And MJ Phase, thank you for the hydrate. Sustenance. <laughs> I learned today that I don't know not JavaScript. You probably know enough JavaScript to get your work done. And what more can you ask for? Okay, so we have just implemented the test for... Hey, turn up. <laughs> Thank you for the 10 bucks, he says. Quaka Pro Fun. Uh, much appreciated, Shark Turn Up. Uh, I'll, I'll buy it. I should buy it. it the thing is, it's a, I believe it's a one-year license or a lifetime license, so it's worth it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The GitHub README thing. All the, all the YouTubers are making videos about it, except for me. I will not make a video about it. But it, but, it is, but it is a fun fact. If you create a repo with your GitHub username and you put a readme in it, that will show up on your profile. Um, okay, we just implemented fold left, which is basically a reduce function. We just implemented this. We're iterating over the values. We're calling our fold function on the accumulator or the previous value and the current value, storing in over and over. We have our result. Great, we can fold left. Um, I think I'm going to skip fold right because I just can't think that way. Fold right is in the reverse order. But the issue with what we're doing right now is we're working with an infinite list, like a list that generates values. It is very tricky for me to think about. Doc has recommended that we memoize the values, but yeah. Oh, it should also be public, that makes sense. So to keep up momentum on this, I suggest figuring out memoize generator and then trying one of the static list generator, the like Fibonacci uh, digits of pi. And you'll have all the major pieces. Okay. <laughs> Joke's on you. I love that video. <laughs> um, oh, did you just get Rickrolled? <laughs> Is that what happened? I don't know. Yeah, you make a good point, Doc. But however, however, um, What if I just implement these other functions? Am I going to, um, am I gonna hate myself if I do this? Okay, so we, we should have uh, one failing test now. And let's figure out what this element function does. 
Um, so if we look at the problem description um, for LM, 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 well, that's going to be hard to find. Dot LM. Uh, true if the list contains X, false otherwise. It possibly diverges for infinite list. It's like includes. Oh, easy enough. I like that. We basically iterate over the entries, and then if we find it, we return true. Otherwise, if we've made it through all the entries, you return false. Cool. So let's do it. Um, so we need this function called element, and then we get the value. Um, it's very similar. We don't really need an initial value. Um, we'll just say um, this is the find value. And we'll say if the value is equal to the find value, then return true. Um, otherwise, return false. That should do it. Uh, I'm not live on YouTube right now. I am I'm premiering a, um, a, a past live stream. Where is it? Yeah, yeah. So this is a live stream that happened on Friday, and this is just a, a premiere, which means people are watching it together. Um, but I am live right now, right? Like, you're watching me. I am live. <laughs> this is live <laughs> um, on Twitch, not on YouTube. Cool. So that worked. Um, share the live with Doc and Alka to solve this. <laughs> no, I think, like, pretty much any time I have attempted a 2Q or a 1Q, it has taken me more than two episodes to solve. It's just a really big problem. It's not something that I can do very fast. Yeah. Yeah, this kata is, like, it's overloaded. Like, if you just look at the problem description... Okay, first of all, for all the new people, um, katas. This is what code katas are. Uh, that's the current kata. That's the kata that we're working on right now. And if you have questions like, uh, what is this LED thing? Is the code on GitHub? Look at the frequently asked questions. Um, there's a part of the frequently asked questions that links to all of the code for all of the things running on my screen, uh, including uh, the YouTube videos where I created those things. So read the frequently asked questions. Yeah, yeah, we made it past 1K. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is the problem description. We have to, we literally have to implement all of these functions um, on the, the list class. So we're getting there. Okay, so we should be able to do that. That should work. Um, that should work. Uh, let's run our tests. Yeah, true, Doc. Yeah, so instead of implementing all of them. Uh, Mr. Turbo, this is much closer to, like, I feel like theoretical computer science. The thing is, like, in the real world, if you needed something like an infinite list, you would probably just bring in a library that that lets you do these kinds of things. Um, the, I would say the, the part here that might be useful is learning what generators are. So, um, I mean, for those of you that are just coming across this, um, an example of where this gets interesting is is like this where you can say like this uh we have a list we want to repeat the value two and then we want to take 10 of them and that and then when we call two list that generates an array of 10 values that are all two however under the hood we're using generators so we can generate values forever and so we technically could say take a million to list and then that would generate an array of length a million um we also have things like iterate where we can pass in a function and then that uh, a function that, and then an initial value, and then that gets called on each individual value, and then when you call two lists, that generates an array. Um, but under the hood, the way we're implementing it is with generators. So for instance, um, the repeat is a generator function that has an infinite loop inside of it that just yields a, the same value every time you call the next, uh, the next thing in the generator. Um, stream dot repeatedly. <laughs> Um, so we're implementing that, but in the real world, you would just use a library that does this already. This is just a good exercise in, for one, in getting these tests to pass, like seeing the code here and then figuring out how to write it. It's a fun little exercise. Um, learning about generator functions and the different things you can do with it. We also did some cool stuff, like we're using static, uh, static methods and like even like a static getter. I'd never done that before. Um, and instance methods, um, which is fun. But in the real world, there was actually a really good comic on programmer humor today. And it's, it's the, like this exact scenario. Uh, Reddit. 
Programmer humor. This one. Uh, job requirements and the job interview. Um, the job interview. Invert a binary tree on this whiteboard. The job. Make the button bigger. I mean, that's pretty much it. So, like, in the real world, you're dealing with, like, user interfaces. I mean, it depends on the job. You could be in a place where um, you're you're potentially, like, your job is to make things faster or more efficient. I mean, most programmers need to do that anyways. But um, you could be tasked with, like, writing much more efficient code uh, rather than just, like, implementing new um, UI things or new features in the app. But for me, this is what I do. <laughs> I mean, I do I do architecture and I do DevOps and I do, uh, like, design databases, databases and stuff like that. But most of the time, I'm building, like, front-end web applications. I don't really have to use much of the theoretical computer science stuff I learned in, in cool, in school. Um, cool school, school school's cool. Um, this is a fun a fun subreddit if you've never heard of it. But yeah, uh, is this useful in the real world? Not really. It's just a fun exercise, <laughs> and uh, I'm a nerd, so I enjoy programming and doing cool things with with programming. Okay. Um, Doc is suggesting that we try to do something like Fibonacci. Is that even in here? Yeah, and I usually just code live. Um, so this is a code problem that we saw for the first time on the last episode last Wednesday. Uh, we started solving it. Right now, I'm solving it live. Uh, this morning, we did web scraping, and I I had a general plan of what we were going to do, but we kind of just coded it live. And good morning. Because Doc, Doc did said something, say something about like Fibonacci, right? It's in the description. Imagine talking to a principal architect at a well-known company about their interview process right after he told me they still use jQuery. Yeah, I mean, a lot of companies do. I mean, you have some older web apps, like you're not gonna rewrite everything. It still works technically. Um, okay. You will also need to implement, it's not even in the test, list.prime and list.fibonacci. <laughs> an infinite list of all prime numbers and an infinite list of Fibonacci numbers. Okay, this could be fun. Um, using the implementation style that they've given there. Fibonacci equals zero one zip width wait what i don't know exactly what i'm looking at here hey buddy <laughs> okay can you help me write this test doc help me write this test we'll implement this and then i'll go because it is getting late it's almost 10 30 here so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna use our infinite list to generate the fibonacci sequence um and we're gonna write a new test for that <laughs> So, um, I think we, yeah, we've got, I think our tests are passing right now. Tests are passing. Um, if you do exclamation mark schedule, you can link, get a link to my schedule. You can also do exclamation mark FAQ and all of your general questions are most likely answered there. Um, test it, uh, Fibonacci sequence. Sequence. In Python, I would just make a generator that builds it. I think it's pretty much what we're going to do. Um, oh, because we could say, well, okay. Um, but what I'm curious about is, like, how do we call it? So we say list dot fib zero one. So, like, how do we tell it? Um, what number to go up to? Oh, we do take. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> right? It's an infinite list. Okay. So, uh, what we would, we would do is, uh, so we would test assert deep equals list dot fib dot 
uh, take 10 to list uh, should be this array of numbers and however many they are there are. Let's do the these first these first few here. Like this. So how many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we do take eight of list.fib um, and then to list, we should get that back. Am I accurate in my test? Does that make sense? Doc says, seems good. Sounds logical, yeah. Okay. Cool. Test fail. So right now, our list does not have a static property called fib, so we need one. Um, so we need a static property, fib, um, that will return an instance of a list. Uh, we need to create a Fibonacci generator, uh, and it just defaults to um, zero and an infinite link length. An IRL stream? What? What do you mean? The fact that I'm eating my <laughs> eating my 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 cashew butter cup. Um, okay, so we need to create a generator function called the fib generator. Um, that basically generates Fibonacci values forever. So we can say um, static. Oh, you're right. Static get because it's a static property. It's a buttercup. What is this thing? Well, it's technically, I mean, it is a buttercup because it's cashew butter. Buttercup. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you're right. So static get is super interesting because you can now do, uh, it's a getter, and you don't have to invoke it like that. You can just do the, the property itself. So um, when you really need just like the uh, current value or the previous value, That was not an ad. I was just explaining what buttercup is. So the previous value is um, starts off at. How's the Fibonacci sequence work? So. The previous value is zero, and the current value. Is one like that. Zero one, and then you add the two, and then that becomes the previous, and then the current, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yield one, yield zero, and the last two entries. Okay, so um, we would say yield the previous value, yield the current value, and then we have an infinite loop. So we'll say while true, we're going to yield uh, the next two. So we'll say um, previous value equals the current value, and then the current value equals the... We don't know. Uh, current value equals the previous value plus the current value, right? And then we yield the current value. Um, but we have to assign the previous value to the value that it was before that. So we need, we need a temp variable. Actually, this is a scenario where uh, we could potentially use um, Array destructuring. I didn't talk about this earlier, but you can use array destructuring to like swap variables. Um, um, so I could say um, we have the previous value and the current value, right? And we want the previous value to become the current value. Wait, how does this work? I can do this, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, current value. Yeah, yeah, okay, current value, and then the current value becomes the current value plus the previous value. Yeah, opposite them. <laughs> okay, why is this completing? Uh, assignment to write value. 
There we go. Right? Parenthesis. Next value. Yes, I can do that. Do I need let? Do I need to put this in parentheses? What's happening here? How does this work? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yeah. Well, well, um, no, no, no. I would say like this. Um, current value. This becomes the pre value and the current value. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> I mean, and then basically, I don't need this variable anymore. I need this. Cool. So what this does is it puts the current value into the previous previous value variable, and then it takes the current value, adds the previous value, and puts it into the current value variable. Um, but it does it all in one go, and it's basically like it it creates a temporary variable behind the scenes. All right? This should work. Yeah. Yeah, should work. All right. Win. Ha 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 ha! Fibonacci. <laughs> and so, um, so that's great. That's fun. Look at this. I don't, yeah, and at this point, yeah, then I don't need the first try. Then I don't need the parentheses. Cool. Yeah, somebody mentioned, I thought I knew JavaScript. Um, who was that? Um, is this vanilla JS? I thought I knew JS, but I don't. Yeah, so I mean, uh, we're using Node version 14, so this is all the features supported supported by Node. Uh, we're using classes, we're using generator functions, uh, we're using static properties, we're using getter properties. Yeah, it's fun stuff. Nice, nice. <laughs> that was fun. Look how easy that was. Hey, Chessy Codes, what's up? Welcome to the show. Um, we are writing some JavaScript. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, okay. That's Fibonacci. Uh, should we do prime numbers? An infinite list of all prime numbers. You might use 0, 1, zip with Fibonacci, tail of Fibonacci. Oh, it's telling us how we could have implemented it using our existing functions. Yeah. What's up, Aiden? You have asked a frequently asked question. We will not shame you, but we will <laughs> we will send you to the frequently asked question. I, I just made this, um, I made it yesterday, I guess. But um, here we go. Number one question, what theme do you use? And there it is. There's a link to my um, settings and stuff. Um, try doing it with that definition. I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I'm done, Doc. <laughs> I've been going at it for three hours. Um, but yeah, what is yield? We talked about it earlier, but I will I will leave you all with this. Uh, this is some homework because next Wednesday we're gonna revisit this, and um, you're gonna need this. So in the in the next seven days, you can practice using generators. Um, but uh, the yield is the way that you return a value from a generator function. Um, and uh, what hair care routine do I use? None actually. I wash my hair maybe once or twice a week. That's about it. And then probably this weekend, I'm going to dye my roots. You can see my roots are coming back. Um, is that in the no, it's, that's not a frequently asked question. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so a generator function. A generator function is a function that can return potentially multiple values. Um, and so you can see here that it has this star in front of it. So this is our generator. And this generator takes in a value. The first time you call it, it's going to return the value that you passed in. The second time you call it, it's going to return that value plus 10. The third time you call it, there's nothing yet left to yield, so the generator is done. And the way that works in practice is you do um, you create an instance of the generator, and that passes in a value. When you call next, that gives you the next yielded value. And then when you call next again, that will give you the next yielded value as well. If you were to call next one more time in this scenario, it would say that the generator is done and there would be no value. So it's basically a way of creating a function that can return multiple values. And the interesting thing about it is whenever you yield a value, it actually pauses the execution of the function. Because in the next uh, invocation, it resumes execution from the place where you last yielded a value. Um, behind the scenes, 
uh, if you're polyfilling uh, async await, it's using generators because it can pause execution. Um, it's a cool thing. And the way we used it was for infinite lists. So um, we were essentially able to generate lists that go on forever <laughs> using generators. Um, so like in this example, um, we're creating, we're saying list.fibonacci.take8. So take uh, is a way of defining like where this infinite list will end. But technically, I mean, we could do this too. Um, we could say take 100. Uh, can anybody, <laughs> can anybody uh, post in the chat? Yeah, Twitch is built with React, that's true. Can you post the first 100 Fibonacci numbers? in copy pasteable format if you're not a sub i will gift you a sub um because i'll show you how this works because basically with a generator we're able to dynamically say um all right we're only going to generate the first eight values and then send that to an array but now we can do it with 100 so we'll generate the first 100 values and it's able to yield the next result uh until it reaches the end um yeah first one into first one person in the Twitch chat to give me the first 100 Fibonacci values that is not a sub, will get it gifted a sub. And if you're already a sub, I'll just give you a high five. One hundred Fibonacci numbers, yes. Everyone's trying. It, so here's the thing. It needs to be in a copy pasteable format, basically comma separated, so I can just paste it in here and run my test. Um, I realize I could just Google it, but this is fun, right? Right? Ooh. Is literally everyone looking for Fibonacci numbers right now? Or is just no one chatting? Oh, you're welcome, Peek. Thank you for being here. Does it work? Well, I need 150. Everyone's looking. I need 100 Fibonacci numbers. Hey, Lakshman. Uh, is that 100? I feel like that's not 100. Frantically searching through my ugly programs <laughs> to generate them. <laughs> um, how many is this, Lakshman? Would it be fast? Would it be faster to code it than have to disable the ad block for these websites? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, this is only the first twenty nine values. You're not gonna be able to post a hundred. Well, give, send multiple messages. I have two thousand. If you, or you could send a gist. I need a hundred. In a hundred values. <laughs> Do the numbers get too big? Is that what you mean, Alka? All right. In NGFX. Uh, ng code. NGF. NFG Codex has it. Uh, all right, here's a Martin with the Fibonacci table. <laughs> well, hello, Electrothermal. Yeah, work was pretty good. Um, and I, when, if I have the energy, I stream twice on Wednesdays, and I did today. Um, okay. This doesn't count. I can't copy and paste it. Um, with Shy Ryan has it. Let's see. We have a gist. It's a CSV file. Ah! We have to look at the raw val values. Okay. Mine is copy pasta. <laughs> well, you're already a sub anyways. So, uh, let's see. I think, I think Shy Ryan was the first to do it. Is this 100? Does JavaScript even support values this big? I may have been totally misled in my... <laughs> let's see. Oh... Shy Ryan, it's length 101. Um, well, that's okay. I don't, I don't think that JavaScript even supports numbers this big, at least by default. Uh, but Shy Ryan, you've got it. I will give to you a sub. Um. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It just rounds it. <laughs> I can do a new big int with it. Um, or uh, with that, I think. Or, uh, it's not a constructor. Do I do this? Yeah. Just thinking. Yeah, it's not going to work. All right, what's the biggest value that is supported? <laughs> uh, probably... 
I don't know. What's the max value in JavaScript? That value works. Int dot max. Uh, in, into math. Number dot max safe value. Max safe integer. I need max safe integer. That's pretty big, actually. Okay, so. You made it strings. Um, it wouldn't technically work. Like, I'd, I'd have to modify my code too much to get it working. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. We just need to find the value that is less than that. Which is probably this one. No, this one. The thing is, like, we could try to filter it. That's, okay, we can go even further than that. Let's go here. That's the right number of digits. Cool, the right number of digits. It just needs to be less than 900. Zero, zero. Um, uh, so I think this one. I think this is the last value. I could use a filter. But I won't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, see, that one got rounded, so it's the number right before it, I believe. It's this one. Teach us filters! No, <laughs> not today. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Okay, so we need all the values up until this one, and then we'll just see how many that is, and then we'll make sure that my Fibonacci function works, and if it does, then that means I know how to code. Uh, that's 79 values. Pretty cool. Okay, so uh, we're gonna say list.fib, take 79 of them, Send it to a list, and that should equal this. All right. Uh, prettier. Format it. All right, moment of truth. Will it work? Yeah, you're right. I could just look at the 79th value. <laughs> hey, it works. So uh, the, the, the nice thing about that is we've written this very generic, first try, we've written this very generic uh, generator Fibonacci function that uh, basically generates the next Fibonacci value uh, using a generator. Um, and the way we did that was like this. So we have our, our, our two initial values. And the first time you call it, we just yield the first zero. The second time we just yield one. Um, and then after that, we have an infinite loop. Um, and this actually doesn't like, it doesn't halt the program. It pauses execution. Um, so, Oh, this is a great idea, Doc. All right, we're gonna do this next time, but I like it. This is an idea from Doc. Is because we, we we created our own entries generator, but yeah, we could we could turn it into an iterator, um, which would make it so that we can basically use this list class in anything that supports iterating, like for of, so the spread operator, different things like that, um, or like passing it into a set. Or, or, yeah, yeah, that, that's awesome. Okay, but uh, this generator, the, yielding the first two values of the Fibonacci sequence, great. After that, we need to use the two previous values to calculate the next, um, and then that just yields the next value. But once it's yielded the next value, it actually pauses the execution. This isn't an infinite loop that's just gonna hang up. It yields the value, and then the next time we ask for a value, it gives us the next value. So it, it pauses the execution here. The next time the code comes back around, does this, and then yields that value. Uh, I mean, currently we're at 200 lines, but that's including spaces, like uh, new lines and spaces. I don't know. It's quite a bit. Um, this it's is a very long kata. Um, cool. So that's our, our Fibonacci generator. And then the way it's working on from the outside world is um, we have um, that to list function. So the to list function basically calls our generator up until um the length and so like this take function basically sets an internal property that says the total length is 79 so to list calls the generator 79 times um so if we look at uh, to list that's where we're spreading the entries and then the entries just does the generator thing so uh, we create an instance of the generator and then we use a for of to look at each value in the generator and if the current index is greater than or equal to the start and less than or equal to the end we yield that value and so whenever we take 79 we actually set the start to be zero and the end to be 79. 
Yeah, I mean, technically you could uh, you could do like, I think we implemented, implemented like a skip function. So you could say skip, right? Do we have skip? It should be possible. Yeah, take the five through seventh. Um, we have drop. Okay, let's find, let's see what, how we call drop. Drop one. Cool, so we could say drop the first in values. Um, so if I did uh, Fibonacci dot take eight drop three, that would get rid of the first three values and which should equal that. Hey, it works. <laughs> uh, is that the fifth through seventh? Um, but I mean, yeah, but that's basically how you'd have to do it. Um, nice. Okay, so that's it. I think I'm done here. <laughs> Thank you everyone for hanging out with me. Thank you, Doc, for all the help. Thank you everyone else for suggestions and stuff that we've done. This is a really big kata. I think the, the last thing I'll do is I'll just run this through the um, the Code Wars uh, tests to see how far we were. Last time we were at about 60% past tests. Um, well, let's see. Is the yield adding an item to a list? Well, the technically the entries function is adding an item to the list, but it's calling the generator which yields the value. So the value is yielded, and then the entries function puts it in the list, or the the array basically. Uh, okay, let's see what we got. Fibonacci dot drop ninety nine take one to get the nine hundred ninety nine Fibonacci number. Very cool. Oh, you're welcome, on Prime. Thank you for being here. Uh, all right. So in our local tests, we only have one failing test? What? Oh, I think it just ends right there. But all right, but when you do an attempt, even when you do, like when you do attempt, even the failed tests uh, still technically run. Oh, are we gonna time out? Mm, we did something wrong. <laughs> oh, oh no, we did it. Oh, well, look at this. We've made progress. So we have 57 past tests. Uh, 12 failed tests. So, what's uh, 57 out of 57 plus 12? We're at 83%! We made 20% progress today. <laughs> Next Wednesday, yeah, it's not bad. Next Wednesday, we're gonna finish. Uh, we'll, we'll do the rest of the functions. Uh, yeah, but what do you got here, Shine Ryan? Oh, did I not gift you a sub? I'm sorry. Let's do that before I go. <laughs> um... Shy Ryan is the person that um, gave us the list of 100 Fibonacci numbers. <laughs> so they get the gift itself. Um, where are we at? And off by one error? <laughs> oh shy <Cheyenne>. hey <laughs> you beat me to it i was i was literally yeah i was literally about to press it and it says a gift subscription is not available thank you shy <laughs> very much appreciated um oh you're right you were off by one but technically we only needed 70 79 so it's still good Anhot says today i learned there's a drum melody added to the background music in super mario world whenever you're writing yoshi huh. Huh. well thank you Flybanker. thank you thank you for being here I don't stream every day, no. You can check out my schedule. Um, I stream four days a week, and Wednesdays I usually stream twice a day. Um, all right, this is... Oh, you wrote it in Elixir? Oh, wait, no. This is... What is this? Functions for creating and composing streams. Streams are composable, lazy enumerables. Oh! So it's like a language construct for, for things like infinite lists? Is that what we're saying, Shai Ryan? <laughs> Add parallaxing to the clouds? How would that work? Hey, Deja Sege. <laughs> Thank you for the 100 bits. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm glad you had fun. Uh, I I'm done streaming. Repeatedly function. Returns a stream generated by calling generator.fun repeatedly. Uh -huh. You can pass it in the generator. Okay, very cool. All right, I'm going to go. We're going to raid somebody, so stick around for the raid. Um, here. Click it. Oh. <laughs> um, 
Okay, I will, I will click it. <laughs> I gotta go back to it, though. I lost it. Make the layers with smaller clouds that go faster than the... Oh, so like multiple cloud layers. Yeah, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, we also talked about making the clouds slower because it's very, it's pretty unrealistic how fast those clouds are moving. <laughs> but yeah, you could have like two different layers of clouds, clouds moving. Yeah, you all, you all are ready with the, the raid message. Click it. Okay. Um, returns a stream generated by calling, by calling the generator function repeatedly. For example, random uniform enum dot take. Wow. That's it. <laughs> a parallax Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here, Shireen. Uh, I don't have a new keyboard, no, but I have, I think I still have RTX voice on. Um, yes, there's currently a machine learning algorithm that is removing external noise, and it just so happens to think that my keyboard is noise, so it removes it. Um, what do you think about Django? I don't really use Python much, but I, I, use, I use mainly uh, JavaScript. All right, I'm gonna acknowledge the follows. We're gonna raid somebody. And then we're going to go trance. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the coding garden. Uh, food, thank you for being here. Uh, Rabia, thank you very much. Uh, Blaze, much appreciated. Uh, Keguya san, thank you for the follow. Dazzler, thanks for following. Taru, thank you for following. Toxic Fruit Punch, thank you for following. Uh, Hamadi, thank you. Uh, Decorate. And Adam and Koku, oh, thank you for the follows. Yeah, thanks for being here, everyone. Um, next stream is planned for Friday. What? <laughs> <laughs> Laconic, thank you for the Twitch Prime. So do we do we not end the stream now because we're in a hype train? I might just end the stream. <laughs> hype farewell. <laughs> but thank you very much, Laconic, for that Twitch Prime sub. Alright, we'll leave it up. You don't look look, seriously, you don't not you do not have to support me, but in the off chance that you want to support me, I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave this open because I don't wanna miss your support events. We can all just sit here in silence. I think that could be a fun exercise. Choices, choices. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Strider. Thank you for, for being here today. Um, what did we have redemption for? Silence. Oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, I'll make a quick song. Let me see if I can, yeah, quick song. Hey, well, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you for the stretch. And um, the posture check from Pastuck. Yeah, the only issue is, I need headphones. I guess these headphones could work, but I think these headphones have like a, let's see really quick. Check, check, check. Yeah, these headphones um, like peak. Oh, nice! Lakshman reached 10,000 reach 10, seedlings. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get some headphones and we'll make some music. Hello. <laughs> I had to run and get those. Okay. Um, MIDI controller. This goes here. Unfortunately. Oh, thank you, Lakshman. 14,000 followers. That's great, huh? Uh, I am going to have to unplug the Arduino so that I can plug in my USB audio interface. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to turn off RTX voice, um, cause that would just ruin the music.
check, check. Check, 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 check. Hello. Hi. Hello. Check, 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 check. Uh, now my voice really should be echoing. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna play a little guitar. That's the plan. All right. Here we go. Ableton. We have a minute left to make a song. Oh, we're probably gonna spend like five minutes on this. <laughs> yeah, the echo's on purpose. I have a, a voice um, pedal here. I'm turning on reverb. You can also turn on autocorrect. It's not that, it's not that, not that much correction. Hello, hello. Check, check. It's also like, like slap, 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 echo, echo, echo. Check, 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 check. check. Hello, hello. Uh, I'm not gonna play a mix. I'm just going to make make a new song. Uh, yeah, it's it's called correction, so it's not exactly auto tune. Uh, why is Ableton taking so long to launch? Shy Ryan, <laughs> 500 bits. <laughs> Thank you for the bits, Shy Ryan. Game over. Okay, here we go. All right, we need to lay down a drum track. So um, let's do that with this. Set that arm to record. Let me make sure my audio is good. Yeah, fast track as the input, built-in output. Hey, Shy Ryan, thank you for the gift itself. <laughs> Very much appreciated. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it is working. There we go. Um, oh. All right, I'm going to turn off my voice and just make music because um, there's background noise and stuff like that.
that's it. That's all. <laughs> that was fun. Um, thank you all for uh, participating in that. What should we call this? You all get to name it. Um. DJ CJ. Hey. DJ CJ, thank you for the 500 bits. <laughs> I like. I think we'll call it De Deja Sege. Deja Sege is the name of this song. <laughs> I forgot the words. That's actually really funny because I, yeah, I don't have any words. Uh, but that, I mean, that was all improvised. So the, the, the drums were looped and then the bass was looped and then the guitar was looped. I think somebody asked about my guitar. Uh, it's a Dane Electro. Does anyone know what this is? This sticker? I approve this message. <laughs> um, it will be available in this video on YouTube. That's a glider, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's from Conway's Game of Life. This is a glider, yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go raid somebody for real now. Thank you all for being here. Uh, thanks again for all the supports. Um, Desert Sej with the 500 bits, Murdoch with the 100 bits, Shy Ryan with the gifted sub, Shy Ryan with the 500 bits, uh, Laconic with the Twitch Prime sub, and Desert Sej with the 100 bits, uh, Shaye with the uh, gifted sub to Shy Ryan, and and a bunch of other things. Waiting for the train to pass. I like that. That's actually really good, Shaggy. <laughs> I'm gonna rename it to that. <laughs> Waiting for the train to pass, because that's kind of what it was. Um, cool. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, next stream is planned for Friday. I actually don't, we might actually do Clash of Code. It's been a while since we did Clash of Code. Um, so we will do that and that will be fun. So tune in for that. Thank you again for all your support and for hanging out, hanging out with me today. Uh, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. Thank you.